The Oni's Eye, The Coming Storm Set Review, sponsored by SomeGuysCards.com. Remember, don't just buy anybody's cards, buy Some Guys Cards. Okay. Welcome, uh, all the uh, all you Colot fans. This was our first uh, Oni's Eye video set review for the coming storm, and I have two guests with it, with me today. I have Anthony Go, uh, which you know as Togashi Azrael, uh, on his Twitch stream playing L5R, and we also have the esteemed Case Kiyonaga, who is a um, a Great Hearthstone player as well as a uh, a longtime L5R player. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks. Good to be Thanks here. For ha- Thanks for having us. All right. The Coming Storm was uh, just released, and um, it uh, seems to have uh, it's going. To, seems like it's going to have a, a good impact on the environment going forward, and it's only going to affect about. Eight or nine co ties, but it's going to affect uh, Gen Con uh, heavily. So uh, that's the reason I wanted some more, um, some better minds uh, in this group um, than my just myself on it. Um, we're going to start with events. Um, Auspicious Arrival is the first event, um, a rare that allows you to take the Imperial Favor. Um, We've seen uh, a couple of cards like this in the past, uh, but I think probably the one that was closest to it was Commanding Favor, uh, back during Lotus, Samurai, and Diamond, I believe. But it um, this one just taking the Imperial Favor doesn't seem that great of an effect. What do you guys think? Um, well, part of Auspicious Arrival um, that makes it interesting is at least... Uh, because of the way events resolve now, that uh, it resolves as a battle action. Mm-hmm. So you can actually resolve and take the Imperial Favor as a battle action. This would be for, like, the defensive control decks. But just based on the rest of the set, what we're looking at, uh, or the shift for control decks, seems to be shifting towards strategy-based control. Yeah. So the Favor isn't as particularly important, and I don't think it's worth the event slot that it's in. Yeah, I, I mostly agree. The reason uh, commanding favor was so good is because it sat in play. Yeah, like it it resolved. It sits in play and it's there for however long it it sits there until you need to use it. This one, if you don't use it the turn that it flips, then it clogs your dynasty side. Yeah, and it does have the upside of potentially taking the favor away from your opponent, uh, if especially if you're in like kind of like a mirror matchup. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't see it being highly used. It is kind of interesting, I guess. But one thing that, oddly enough, that doesn't make the favor as potent this arc as, is the fact that with the cavalry rule change, just sending them home is like, okay, we'll just move to another battle, and I'll just move back in. And you also have the the issue with crane scouts and a kage sensei. You know, send home yep. is not as great in this arc, which oddly enough, makes the favor less useful than normal. Yeah, I mean, the movement back in isn't that strong in this arc, but then Ring of Earth is in pretty much every military deck as well. Yeah. And, you know, if, if Dragon sees Crane and no Akage Sensei, like, they're probably starting Ring of Earth instead of Ring of Air. Like, there's just a lot of, like, really solid movement, even if none of it's great. Like, yeah. back to the front is okay. Uh, sudden movement is okay. Like you said, cavalry is the change to cavalry is pretty significant. So it's just not not as strong as it used to be, and with the change to events, it is actually even weaker. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's there's no real like pop out amazing movement card like samurai and celestial for monks specifically. Because I'm a dragon player, I can talk about falling leaf strike buoyed by the kami, all that stuff from celestial moving yeah. forward, but. Here in Ivory right now, you're not looking at anything that just pops out and goes, wow, this movement action is fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to agree. The next event on the list is Denial. Uh, 
Uh, speaking of favor, speaking of uh, favor and issues, <laughs> let's put this event into play and make uh, every time a favor action resolves to lose to honor. Um, and there's a few, there's several favor actions in the in this in the arc, but I don't see that dishonor would want to run something like this. No, not at all. It it doesn't seem I mean, like. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, guys. It's it's an honor meta card. Uh, yeah. Like it's pure, pure and simple. It, that's all it is. Like if you're playing against dishonor, you're never gonna have the favor except in the early turns, maybe. And if they pop this, and I mean you're not buying a guy to take the favor anyways. So like it's an honor meta card, and it it's kind of like a safeguard, I guess, against like that crane political deck being super powerful. But even that is not like that big a deal. I mean, it's it's nice to have, but I don't think it's gonna do much. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I mean, if Crane Honor, like Turbo Rocket Honor or any kind of Honor deck, was the top tier deck in the environment or going into this, Denial would be a fantastic card in terms of uh, just getting to use it because uh, just stopping any favor action and cost, costing an Honor deck to Honor could be the difference between winning and losing against a strong deck or a dominant deck in that case. But to play a card to meta a deck that's sort of maybe above average at best mm -hmm. is uh it's i don't believe that it's worth it at all yeah yeah and the the last of the events has one that has been on had a lot of discussion uh <laughs> the blessing uh being able to open action give your give your holding a wealth token at the start of your next turn there's been a lot of discussion on the power level of this card I think this card's insane. It's small farm. I agree. Like, the, the arc is all about economy yeah. at the beginning, which is not that unusual. Like, a lot of times, the more powerful stuff is all economy-based. Um, but this this card is small farm. Like, you didn't keep small farm last arc when you flipped it on your first flip. You're not going to keep the blessing. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does have the downside of A, being cancelable, and B, being not viable if you whiff on a holding on turn one. Yeah. But, like, we are dealing with kind of a lower power level in terms of, like, what our gold buys. So every piece of gold that you can get is important. And there are some factions that just rely on having that one more gold on turn two. So, I mean, it's, it's really good. I think any, like, fast-ish military deck will run it. Do you I'm running it in Lion and Spider and Unicorn, I think. Do you think it'll be running... Uh, you weren't thinking about running it in multiples? Or yeah, like if you're running one, you're probably running three. Okay. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, I think more so, uh, you're going to see this a lot in a lot of Lion builds. Because um, giving Lion the ability to have eight gold on their second buy on a already fast enough military clock is just absolutely ridiculous given the cost of all of their guys and how much or how much eight gold can buy on the second turn for them. Yeah. Um, like Case said, uh, you're probably looking at like the fast-ish military decks uh, trying to take full advantage of it. For me personally, I think it's mostly in Lion and Unicorn. Uh, Spider will probably get away with it too. Right, yeah, I mean, any cool. any faction that was running um, small farm last arc is, is going to run the blessing. Um, so. <laughs> and the award for most confusing card in the set goes to... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, is, is a negative one chi token, is that a positive numeral? Because it's not like minus one, it's just the one. Yeah. But because it's a one token, but I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, a clarification that needs to happen with this card from a rules team perspective when they start. I don't know if they've the started. Value? Can you increase the gold cost? Yeah, just just little it's, things like that. Oh, there's, yeah, no kidding. It's so vague. Uh, I can, from a playtest perspective, because uh, I am on playtest, what I can talk about is how we tested the card. Yeah. And we had tested it. You know, if you see a spell that says range three, for instance, we tested it as you can make the spell range four, etc., etc. Um, so rage attack, fear attacks, um, stuff like that. But the way that the card ended up printed <laughs> was, uh, yeah, it creates a whole new level of confusion. 
I, I can't honestly say how good or bad this card is until I know exactly what it does. <laughs> and, uh, so that that's all I can really say about that. Yeah, I could see where that got confusing. Um, they knew what they wanted to put on the card, but it just didn't come out worded right, I guess. That's what you're saying, really. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a spell that creates a personality, can you make its force... One oh, higher yeah, since it's like yeah three people like it's just like these are all like really stupid questions, but like but all of these valid. questions come up yeah like can you increase an honor loss can you increase an honor gain I assume that's what it was kind of initially meant to be mm -hmm. yeah like that was increase one of the an honor loss or gain or increase a range attack or fear or something. But... Can I make my summon undead champion a six three instead of a five, yeah exactly two? I mean. I would assume so, right? Is the numeral? I assume the numeral is just each number. Can you make it a five three instead? Yeah. Like, what about uh, what's the one? It's like the Kyoshi's Wrath or something. Is like battle card with four lower force. Can yeah. you like? I assume you can increase that to a five. Can you make Cohen's Whisper go to one province strength instead of zero? Uh, like zero doesn't count as a positive or a negative number, so it cannot increase that. Interesting. Yes. All right. Yeah. I already looked that up. Zero is not a positive number, nor is it a negative number. Okay. It's so it, just, right. yeah. Bottom line for the card, really, really vague. the rest of it I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But really, really vague, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a thing for rules team to sort of... I'm, I'm waiting for someone to actually ask that question. Uh, me, personally, I wouldn't be using the card. I don't have space for it in, in any of the decks that I play. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if uh, a Shugenja deck would even consider it. It depends on what kind of deck it is, I guess, and what the the actual ruling ends up being. But, uh, again, like I said... So if it ends up being a way to abuse the card, then absolutely. Otherwise, I don't think it sees it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, like, that good, just because none of these effects are, like, that meaningful, right? Because, like, this, like uh, the spell that's, like, gain force equal to his personal honor plus one if he's your Jimbo, mm -hmm. like, sure, mm -hmm. you can pump that up to two. Or you can increase the force on, like, an undead champion or something. But, like, the thing that I dislike about this is it now puts an emphasis on whether a card is a number or a word. Yeah. Or whether an effect is a number or a word. Because, like, before it was, like, minus one force and a minus sign one F is, like, the same thing. So it's, like, now you... You kind of actually have to be aware of that. I think that's just something that is kind of silly, to be honest. Yeah. Like, you, you, it shouldn't be something that you have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The, probably the I'd say is the holding that got a lot of, the, the most talk about bookkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of good, <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. Um. I actually advocated that this card not make it through print. <laughs> um, and part of it was the way uh, gold pooling works now with the new ivory rules. Yep. Part of it is the existence of Jade Pearl Inn. Oh, yes. So, I mean, a one-for-one one that gets bigger Searchable. that you can find on turn one yeah. means by turn four or five, it should be about... You know, three three gold, four gold. It opens up room for big holdings with um, with utility. Example, we're going to talk about it later. Is a uh, bountiful fields. Like I'm going to use the bookkeeper to pay the four gold and have this bountiful fields wide open to do stuff. Yep. It gives a lot of creativity to to uh, to gold schemes, but at the same time, it could be an overly I don't want to use the word toxic, but along those lines, it's too it much be, gold for its cost. Exactly. Like, at the end of the game, you're producing 6-7 gold. Or, like, even in the middle of the game, you're producing, like, 3-4 gold. Like, that's a one-cost holding. Yeah. yeah. That you're talking about. Like, it's funny. This If this were just secluded away station... Yeah. Like, a 2-for-2 two two that got plus 1 and you uh, brought a, whenever you brought a holding into play, it would actually be weaker because you can't have 6 of them in your deck. Like, you only have 4. Mm -hmm. Or, well, you only have 3. But, like, this way... You like Raven said, you have three JPIs and you have three bookkeepers. So anytime you find one, I, I mean, it's like it's kind of silly. It's, it's really, really powerful. Yeah, I th I think what makes it 
Yeah, I think that's the biggest part that makes it so powerful is the fact that you have a holding that searches out this holding. And that's, I mean, that makes it, it I think that on top of the ability is what makes it ridiculous. Because you're yeah. right, if, I mean, I played Secluded Way Station, it was great when you hit them, but you had to find them. Of course, we had a yeah. new wall back then, but. Yeah, but still, like. If you don't, like, I mean, the problem with Sakuta Way Station was if you find one or two early, like, you can kind of just win the game there just because your opponent has, like, awkward gold and you're like, I bow this way station for 14 gold. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the problem is now is everybody gets to do that, like, kind of regardless. And the factions that don't want to naturally run JPI, so I guess it's just Lion and Unicorn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those two factions actually suffer a little bit, which isn't a bad thing, but this this holding is so powerful that it's just like most of them will run it anyways. Yeah. Yeah, this this probably gets the award for best uncommon in the set. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean can you yeah. imagine like a unicorn player flipping like three bookkeepers and a and a stables on turn one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like that's I mean that's six gold production that they get right there. And then, what, on the next turn, they let's say they buy a holding and some stuff, right? Like, a guy and two holdings. Yeah. Now they have, what, 17 gold production on turn three? Yeah. And they yeah. buy not all... I mean, obviously, that's a that's a really extreme case, but... And then on turn three, they're swinging and playing cavalry escorts and taking a province. Yeah, and, <laughs> and yeah, buying a holding, which is... Like, basically, every time you buy a holding with Bookkeeper, it's two holdings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the other the other part, if because uh, I had talked about gold pooling for a bit, and this I noticed this actually today uh, when I was streamcasting one of the uh, the tournament matchups today was uh, it's literally because of gold pooling. Every time you bring a holding into play, you can float extra costs for whatever reason. So, for instance, let's say you have a bookkeeper in play, uh, and you have x like sixteen gold total, including the bookkeeper and you pay five gold for a four gold holding, not only does your bookkeeper get bigger, you still get that one floating because of the way gold pooling works. Yes. And it's really, it's a mechanic that can really be taken advantage of really early in the arc, or early in the game, rather. And it's it does get borderline insane. Uh, in PT, I was looking at, like, I had a bookkeeper at, like, seven for some reason because the game stalled out. And just because I had gold, it was I was able to win games. So, yeah, the gold pooling rule is another big, big thing that makes it a lot better than it was, or than it would have been. Because yeah. if, if you didn't have that, then you'd have to choose between growing it or paying, like gr paying gold and growing it and losing a whole bunch of gold in the later turns, or using it for like three or four or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Bountiful Fields, that is our next holding. Um, mm -hmm. Four for four, and with the battle ability to negate force penalties that target uh, more, two or more personalities, um, Kachiko just seemed to be seemed to got neutered right there, didn't she? Yeah, a little bit. They needed something to counteract like the mass force jab stuff. And I, I kind of was hoping Jesse and Victor would come back. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yes. I think this is a pretty reasonable alternative. Yeah, I think putting on a holding seemed like a, a good idea because now you have to choose between using the gold and using the holding. So mm -hmm. yeah. it makes and, choices. I'll... And you can play around it. Like, if you're the Dishonor player, like, you don't have to just, like, throw down, like, a bunch of, like, flashy technique and... What is, what's that at the event? Oh, fever in the blood. Something blood. about the blood. Fever in the blood, yeah. Like, it, you're not, like, throwing down a fever in the blood and a flashy technique and some other force jab. And then, like, one justly earned victory wipes all of them out. Now it's like, oh, he's got one bountiful fields that negates my Kachiko. Now I can use the other two. Or, like, he's got one bountiful fields. I have a flashy technique. I'm going to wait until I get a fever in the blood to use both of them. So one of them sticks. Yeah. Like, but... Just that the opportunity to have to wait to use it could be 
could be detrimental. So a card like this sort of swings that back in their in their favor in a military deck's favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's a nice compromise because Justin and Victory probably is a little too powerful. Yeah, I agree. a little bit too swingy, and this is a way to get around that without completely neutering it. Yeah, I, th so. I think it was a good choice. I, I I like the card. I like the design and the idea of it. Also, it's a farm. Not yeah. unimportant. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I couldn't yeah. believe they reprinted Vast Paddy Fields. I was <laughs> mind blown. Uh, well, going back to the, the previous discussion about Bookkeeper, yeah. uh, we were talking about the availability of this card on turn four, turn five, whatever it is. If you get a Bookkeeper on turn one, yeah. this card is ridiculous. Because now you don't even have to make that choice. I'm going to buy the bookkeeper for everything yeah. and leave this holding up. And it's going to sit there up for when I need it. Exactly. Yeah. It's also, like, it's really nice to see them making more 4 for 4s because the only other 4 for 4s in the environment are, I think, Nexus of Lies and Productive, productive Mine. Mind. Yeah. yeah. And Productive Mine is, I mean, it's a kind of a chase rare. So this gives new players, like, a lot of opportunity to have... Maybe not equivalent, but comparable gold schemes if you don't want to use all nine four for fours. Like, you can use six four for fours now. And you don't have to drop, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever on productive mines. Yeah. yeah. Or, like me, I have three foil ones, so I dropped more than that. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. But it's it's no longer a, well, I have to get these. Yeah, like, exactly. you, you can play around with Bountiful Fields for a while. Until you decide that you want to get productive mines or not, so it's it's nice to see it in a common spot instead of a rare. Yeah, I thought that was nice. Uh, next up is one of the two fortifications, or excuse me, there's three fortifications in the set. Uh, Carpenter Shrine. Uh, I remember playing a card called Empty Crevice back in the day, uh, and it was pretty good. Um, this isn't quite empty crevice, but it is still very good. Yeah, I mean it's an honor holding. All mm -hmm. all honor holdings are always going to be good, basically, like or potentially good. Um, the fact that this one has actual it's like it's a two for two, and it, it's an honor holding is, you know, it's worth the payoff for when it occasionally dies in a province. Yeah, I was gonna talk about. Uh... The cost efficiency of the holding was something that uh, that honor decks were looking for because they're already p playing a lot of inefficient holdings in their decks, uh, yeah. like the three gold cost Kabuki Theater Troop and the poorly five gold garden. cost produce no gold poorly yeah. placed garden. So giving them something like this was was a good boost for them. Um, again, like Case had mentioned, the the uh, the only downside is that it's a fortification, yeah. and it's well worth the risk. For most honor decks, I believe. Yeah, I mean, this would, this would actually be better if it weren't a fortification, but even so, it's like it, it's a PPG, and if you buy it on the first couple of turns, it's like the same thing as yeah. like a, a two for two. Is like if it were just a holding instead of a fortification. So, yeah, I remember a broken honor deck back with a bunch of fortifications back in the day. I'm sure Case remembers that one. I don't, actually. I've never played... This is the first time I've played L5R with fortifications. Oh, okay. Um, there was a there was a deck back in the Jade Arc, right toward the end. They'd, it, they had the um, Great Walls of Caillou, which was um, 744 Crab Stronghold. And all fortifications entered play for four less gold. What was scary about it was the fact that they printed a Caillou Sensei that allowed you to put... Fortifi uh, allowed you to attach your fortifications to any province, no matter where they flip where they flip face up. Uh, but the only restriction was the gold cost couldn't be reduced uh, um, to zero. Yeah, it couldn't. Yeah, it had to be at least one. Uh, and all fortifications affected all provinces, and it was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I saw this and I'm like, hmm, that's kind of scary. <laughs> I'm glad I have that big deck sitting at aside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in eternal formats, this might be an insane card, but oh, it, yeah. it, it, in the environment, it is. <laughs> in the environment that we have right now, I think it's a perfectly fine card. Yeah, yeah. I think it's well balanced considering this is seems to be a very military heavy format, so it's a risk to play it, uh, but it's still very good uh, on the, the gold curve as well as the honor game. Yeah. 
Uh, next up was the card that got Unicorn players going, oh my lord, I didn't print this. Uh, Cloth Market. <laughs> yeah. They've never I mean, had a 5 for 5, ever. It's Unicorn's version of a 4 for 4. Yep. This is really good. Yeah, essentially, it's just what they needed to balance out their gold, because previously, you were looking at a lot of different clunky-ish unicorn gold schemes. This one balances it out so well, and the fact that it's it's a five, it's the five for five. It's common. It's a five for five productive mine, and yep. it's it's amazing. I mean, the only faction that'll play it is unicorn, maybe like a lion or anybody that uses a minus one gold sensei, but. Uh, it's like it's a really solid card. Yeah, and it's it's it might as well say we'll only enter play for unicorns. Like, yeah, <laughs> agreed. Rich get richer. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the next fortification up is a defensive memorial. Uh, two for two, enters play bowed, and the province has plus two strength. Is it, this is an interesting fortification. Um, produces gold and gives your province strength a bump. That's pretty good. I like the design on this one because, like, you're taking the risk of losing the the holding with the extra defense, and the extra defense makes it less likely that it'll be taken early. Yeah. So the risk of losing it is lower. Yeah. the 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 risk factor is is not as high as a lot of uh, the other fortifications. And on top of that, uh, the majority of the honor gaining decks are looking at six province strength, so defensive memorial slides into there really, really well. Yeah, bumping him up to an eight is a, is makes a big difference for them. That's for sure. And unlike the other fortifications, stacking them on the same province doesn't uh, doesn't actually make it a bigger target because mm-hmm. it also makes it harder to harder to actually break. Yeah, it's it's a really nice design and it it's it's very it's very cool. Speaking of the Caillou Wall deck I was talking about, this is going over there somewhere. <laughs> uh, next up is one that I, I've heard some talk about: House of Disgrace. Uh, you lose three honor when you enter play. You can bout for two, or you can lose an honor to produce three, and then you get to shrink someone's personal honor as a tireless open action yep. it's clearly a dishonor holding um, but it is an interesting one I honestly it all depends on how much the lower personal honor than printed personal honor stuff matters mm-hmm. if that stuff is really really strong then this will see a lot of play in dishonor decks if it's not they won't. and I think it's pretty much that simple yeah not much else to say about it, really. It's it's the utility of the minus two personal honor. It depends on what cards come out next, right? So yeah. Um, next up is Caillou Engineers, uh, two for two retainer that you can transfer fortifications as a battle or open action, uh, which is a really nice trick. Uh, look, let's save the um, Carpenter Shrine. Forget saving the Carpenter Shrine. Let's move the defensive mor- memorial onto this province so I save it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's do province strength. Hey, I mean, that like, from? yeah, it's it is risky, or you can use it to mitigate risk. Mm-hmm. Um, it, though the question will be like, how many fortifications do you have to run before it's good, and yep. how many holding slots are your fortifications eating up? But. All I, I just hope that there's not like a faceless fortification deck because that would really make me sad. Me too. Um, <laughs> I don't foresee one coming, but uh, in terms of just moving fortifications around, there are a lot of interesting things you can do with that. Um, but for right now, it's it's just what it is. Uh, you're like Kay said, you're you're weighing risk with the number of fortifications in your deck, and and you're trying to validate a two for two. I'm not entirely sure that I would be playing it yet. Yeah. Well, I know Case doesn't want to see another faceless honor deck. Yeah. I just think that whole idea of faceless is really bad, whether it's honor or military or anything. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm completely on board with that. I, I, I don't like it either, so... Yeah. 
um, Shigikawa's Court. Uh, a one for one that allows you to sh open straight to personality that lobbied this turn and also gives you plus five family honor with lobby checks. Oh, God. It's a free straight in, in honor decks yeah. that are running JPI, anyways. I don't know. It's really good. Probably don't run more than one. I'll have to agree. Um, in terms of, uh, at least for honor decks, we were talking about economic inefficiency. So uh, they need they really need to minimize the numbers of things that produce one gold for them. Yeah. Um, this this is what gave rise to a lot of the stuff like courtiers producing gold to make up for those missing that missing economy, right? But I don't see this as more than a one of just because you're throwing a lot of again a lot of risk in there with uh, with less gold production. Yeah, I mean. You run like one of this one bookkeeper, maybe two, in uh, maybe like a Tsukihime's Hot Springs or Yukihime's Hot Springs or something for your three JPIs. Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. about it. It's a JPI target, really, mm -hmm. is what it is. Like all one gold cost holdings that produce gold are going to be JPI targets, and it's like as the arc continues, like JPI is just going to get more and more valuable, which is just stupid. Yeah, toolbox decks have always been uh, an interesting breed, and I know uh, Lion during the days of um, superior uh, strategist. strategist. Yeah, it's like here toolbox where I got one of, of a bunch of bunch of different meta cards that just seem useful in great matchups. So yeah, run thirty seven one ofs and three superior strategists. <laughs> I I will always <laughs> find the best answer for the problem. <laughs> so. Uh, next up is Temple of Serenity. And I aims to misbehave. <laughs> um, a two for two temple that you can uh, battle, equip a spell for t uh, two and a post against for two less gold, gain one honor or two honor if the target is defending. It's good. I mean, like, Shigenja needed something like this. There's, what, Colonial Dojo? Or not Colonial Dojo, uh... There's a three cost holding from coils that lets you attach a follower or an item, and that's I think unopposed. And like, there's just no way for a spell to be useful in in hand, unless you're running on Check Fury or uh, Isawa Kaseya. Mm -hmm. So this gives them an actually reliable way to place spells during an opposed battle. And the loss of tempo, like you play a spell, they get to do something about it, is actually I think pretty balancing. Yeah, it's it's pretty much a fair and balanced. It's it was the, for me, it looks like the the, the balance against what we saw for spells last arc and in the in the previous arcs with City of Tears. Uh, this is like the balancing factor of what we went through over the last two arcs. So I mean, being able to attach in battle hasn't really been an issue until you can do something again right after it. Uh, so this is pretty fair and balanced, I would say. Taking an additional action usually has uh, consequences as, as far as power level goes, as we've found out in the past. Yeah, every single spell becomes just a red card. Yeah. With upside. So I think this is a, like kind of where you want to be with attaching spells in battle. Uh, next up, uh, Temple of the Heavenly Crab. Rich Welcome coffers, back, Rich Coffers. Minus, yeah. minus, minus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rich Coffers that cost you one more to to turn it on, but uh, yeah, there's yeah. If when it sees play, it'll see play. Yeah, I mean, any deck that really needs a Rich Coffers will run it. I think it's an okay card. Yeah. It'll see some play. I don't think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think not not much else to say about it, really. It's just, it's just. A three for two rich coffers. That's it. Do you need gold on your opponent's turn? Fantastic. There you go. Right. And then you can pay one less to remove the rich part from the coffers. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Tunnel Network. It's a zero cost fortification, karmic uh, battle bow. Move your personality, target personality home, or absent battle. Move your target personality at home to this battlefield. 
uh, another card for anybody wanting to try a fortification deck, uh, which, like we talked about, isn't there isn't quite there yet. Uh, it's an inch. I mean, it's an interesting ability. Um, not as broken as a Kage Sensei, or as powerful as a Kage Sensei is, but. Uh, in test, I tried really hard to make this card work, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, it, it's one of those things where, um, because of the, the restriction on fortifications, where you can only take the action on the fortification if it's at that current battlefield, whether it's move your personality home or move them in, uh, doesn't make it worth the dynasty spot. And my opinion is it doesn't even make it worth the rare spot in the actual set. But Yeah, uh, I, agree, I agree with Raven. Like, that's, from what I understand, this card is not very good. Yeah. Uh, maybe if it produced one gold or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And it's a large farm. Everyone would run it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or a small farm, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just just not that good of a card. Probably should have been an uncommon, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Voice of experience. I, this one's got has had a lot of talk about it <laughs> in multiple places, except dueling decks. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you're looking at li- uh, the potential rebirth of Lion Tacticians with this card. There's a lot of application for it. Um, I brought it up on on my uh, on my stream a couple of times. I had mentioned that the Mantis Sleep Deck was a thing. This holding is what makes it an even bigger thing than it already was. Yep. It'll it's be an interesting, interesting card. S- yeah. I, mean, uh, I don't have a lot to say about it. Raven's done more theory crafting with it than I have. But, yeah, yeah it's got a very unusual effect, which means that it'll either find a place and be key to that deck, or it'll just not be played. It's also karmic. So, I mean, it, it yeah. has that other... That other utility to it that, as we mentioned before, the other the other three for three holding just doesn't have. Yeah, it's so. also it's it's kind of interesting because like, as you pointed out, it's karmic. So, it's not often that you see a card that is strictly better than another card. And voice of experience is strictly better than well that traveling market is that what it's called? Yeah, traveling. the three yeah. for three karmic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's strictly better than that card. I mean, I guess traveling market has market on it, so basic. It's technically not, but I mean, effectively, this card is just like you're, it's just push traveling market out of like lion decks. Yeah. Uh, next up is Toritaka Isa. Is- Isa. Yeah, Isa. 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 Yeah. Three, two for six scouts. Uh, bow him to bow target enemy card. Uh, n- not very enticing. We were, ta- we were already talking about overcosted bodies. Definitely more inv- enticing than Shinoda, though. Yeah. Like, just bow to bow a card is actually, like, not a terrible effect right now. He's not great, but, like, he might see some play. And the six gold is a lot, but you do get to just bow a card that, like, you can't really. Especially right now, you can't really like underestimate the power of bow a card. Yeah, especially conditionless and through attachment sort of deal. Um, essentially, Isai is the same effect as playing. I think there's two red cards that do that right now: uh, uncovering the culprit and uh, what's that one from Coils? The uh, the Tales of the Disgraced. Tales of the Disgraced. Yeah. Uh, Isai yeah. is a walking, re- essentially repeatable version of those strategies and there's, there's also, card is just yeah there's also um uh the strength of the bear but you have to but to trigger it you have to be five force or greater printed yeah and i think it's seven hmm? no it's five. No, I thought it was oh, no it's five it's five uh, i was gonna say there's very few cards at five printed force to straighten that will straighten themselves yeah um but yeah i mean yeah bauer I, yeah, I I could see Case's point. It makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, battle actions on personalities are definitely at a premium, and this is one of the better battle actions you'll see. 
on a non-unique personality. So yep, you might see some play. I think he's a decent personality. I don't think he'll see a lot of play because, like I said, six is a ton of gold. But yeah, not out of the question. Now we get to the interesting section of the uh, yeah the the uh, <laughs> the spice factory part of it as we call it on my stream. Um, <laughs> me, me personally, <laughs> let me have this one first because th this one this one says invest less gold if you're playing against a dragon. Um, uh, Yasuki Otoko yeah. um, gives use to a lot of cards that we didn't expect to see used in Dishonored X, like Abundant Farmlands or even the new... Uh, Temple of the Heavenly Crab, Itoko becomes, I'm going to turn this holding into my engine, or a part of my engine that's already really strong going in. Yeah, they're just, uh, crab players were licking the chops when and when they saw this. And he's destined. Oh, yeah, let me draw a card for putting him into play, too. Just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I guess they want Yasuki Dishonored to be a thing again. Like, this this guy just is, is really, really good. Like, you are going to have to run uh, the Rich Coffers clone. Mm -hmm. Not clone, but uh, Rich Coffers minus minus. Mm -hmm. But, like, this guy is just really good. He's he's four gold for a courtier merchant destined with three chi at the worst. So, like, I mean, he, like, yeah, the worst, he just draws your card. At best, he's... Like your Dishonor engine. Uh, this guy's really good. Yep. He's going to be a mainstay in Crab Dishonor. Maybe even Scorpion Dishonor? I don't know. Uh, yeah, especially at that gold nine cost. Nine might be a little much. Yeah. yeah, nine might be a little much, though. Because yeah. you do have to pay the extra invest cost for him to be good. Like, mm -hmm. l let's be clear here. This guy actually says seven gold cost and minus one if someone else is dragon. Yeah, <laughs> like he that he does say that, but yeah, yeah, he might as well. Yeah. And the speaking of the spice factory, yeah, Lord, <laughs> the twi the twin sister doesn't help either. Like no, especially for okay. So Yasuki Shire, um, especially for for decks that like to spend a lot of gold on things and tend to spend all of their gold on every turn, which is, you know, in the early game, works out really well. But on the flip side of it, if Crab sees, or anybody playing it really, sees Shirai really early and, you know, the free follower that dishonors a guy, look out at how quickly you can lose honor. This is kind of insane. Um, it's, an, it, it's Way of the Scorpion, which we'll talk about later, for Crab. Yeah. Reusable. The other so. thing is, like, this just really emphasizes that the best way to fight Dishonor is to get as much gold in the first few turns as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, even more so than it used to be, because before it used to be you get all gold and then flood the board. It was, like, one of the best ways to fight against Dishonor. More so than ever, like, because this, this economic punishment kind of Dishonor stuff that the Yasuki are doing, if Crab especially is the the dominant dishonor deck, which very well might be. Um, that's going to be even more important to have like a really good economy at the beginning. So, and that is all the crab toys. We're moving on to the crane. Um, Daidoji Ryushi, uh, two one four gold reserve scout. And he has an interrupt, uh, absent interrupt. After you recruit him, give him plus two force. So essentially, is a f on the turn you bring him out, he's four for four. But yep, I think he's pretty good. Yeah, like four for four for a turn, and then he's a two force body later. Yeah, and he's a scout, so like you can use him to bow, like bow him for scout actions and stuff like that. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I could see, I could see a lot of usefulness. Yeah, just an overall I mean, he, solid personality. Yeah, he's solid. He's not great. He'll see some play in like some of the more aggressive and uh, I guess reserve like trick oriented scout decks. But definitely a really solid personality overall. 
Uh, this and this next personality got a lot of talk, mostly for his interrupt. Kikita Burai, Burai. Yeah, uh, Kikita Burai. Um, for again, this is this is a very typical um matchup that you're looking for. Um, two th- two three duelist with an ability for six gold is pretty good. The interrupt part of it is what makes him. I wouldn't say above the curve, but at least above average. Mm-hmm. Um, he's basically above curve. Uh, he's like barely above curve. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're looking at the anti-dragon. Because if you wanted to say dragon was a better dueling deck that doesn't have duelists, whatever the case may be, Burai is just the answer Yeah. for that specific deck, which is the only military deck dragon currently has, which is kind of... I don't see why you would put Burai in a deck unless the whole deck, the whole dueling deck for Crane was an actual thing. I just don't think it's there right now. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. That, like, Crane dueling isn't really a thing. And I think the most important part of this card could potentially end up being Artisan. Yeah. Like, he's he's fine as a personality, but right now Crane has a lot better than fine. And he doesn't really fit in honor decks because, like, he's a duelist, which is cool, but Crane's not really great at dueling right now. Or I guess they just have better things to do than duel. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think that's that, that that's the statement that I was thinking of right now. All right. Um, Back to the Kikitas then. Uh, Kikita um, Mito uh, Hime? Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, despite this being a otherwise blank personality, a 3 3 for 6, 3 personal honor, Magistrate, Destin, and Duelist are. seems like an amazing combination. It's pretty solid for a. Vanilla personality, if you want to call it that. I mean, des- yeah. paying essentially paying one extra gold for Destined is not the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, and he's got Imperial. Like, he's a Magistrate, he's a Duelist. He's got Imperial, which, like, kind of matters for that Imperial Sword. And, yeah, draw a card. Like, perfectly reasonable personality. We'll see some play. Maybe not a ton. Like, he, he needs to find a deck to fit in. But... It's not, like, a bad personality at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just doesn't have a, uh, the deck right now, but this is some somebody who, going forward that uh, certainly if that deck comes around, this is going to be a personality that I get to buy a body that, that can duel and draw a card and has some very relevant keywords. Yeah, that's very very good for them. Yeah. yeah. Alright, I know Anthony's about to... Uh, He's, he's licking his chops with the next card. He's um, been pumping this on stream. He, good old Capsai. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Miramoto Reiji, um, somebody thought it was a good idea to give Dragon a 4-3 Cavalry Kensai. Uh, no ability, obviously. But, in a, in a common spot, this guy has been pretty fantastic. Um... The ability to attach, like, a family sword and a Justice of the Crane to this guy also makes him a giant dueling threat and a ten-force cavalry guy that takes provinces. I don't have any issue with this whatsoever. You should have seen my, you should have seen my draft Saturday. I, ha- I had him on board with... Um, I ended up drafted three of them, and I had, um, I had uh, two tested blades on him. Mm-hmm. And uh, a cavalry escort on him, so... He was soloing provinces, and nobody yeah. wanted to stay with him. It's like, uh, I'm just going to be bowed out and die. It's not gonna wor- not worth my time. Yeah, I mean, when you're taking draft strength provinces with one guy, as long as you're investing enough into him, that's pretty fantastic. The fact that you only need to invest eight gold on this guy, or uh, on top to mm-hmm. essentially solo provinces, makes him really, really good. Sometimes only four. And sometimes only four, depending on who you're playing against. Yeah. yeah. So. This guy is really good. Like, 
He's basically the like Saisu, the the cavalry yeah. tactician dragon. Yep. Except like he actually has keywords that you want. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, this guy's really good. He'll find a spot in every dragon weapon military deck. Yep. In other words, for non-dragon players, you're going to be sick of seeing him very soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, next on the, on the line of interesting dragons, at least for me, uh, Miramoto Takanori. 3-2, uh, 5-5-3. Five, five, uh, plus one chi while he has a weapon, and fear equal to his chi. Um, the only downside for me with Takanori is that first number, yeah. the honor requirement. Um, just little, because little the majority of... Yeah, it's the Hijatsu Sensei uh, question. Um, I, it's still going to see a lot of play, so you're going you're gonna to be looking at trying to get ahead uh, of that for honor. And for a battle action that just says fear uh, in an attachment-heavy or what seems to be an attachment-heavy military field currently, not entirely sure he's worth um, the spot in a deck compared to uh, compared to Reiji over here, but uh, still solid, pretty balanced. He's fine. Um, you guys hit the nail on the head with the Hojatsu problem, but I mean, not all the Kensai decks are going to be dueling. I say that now, and pretty much all the Kensai decks are going to be dueling. So. <laughs> But yeah, like he, he's he's fine. He's like three, two for five with a battle action, and one that's actually going to be fairly relevant. It'll be fear four almost always, at least, often yeah. fear five. So yeah. And now we get to talk about the Togashi, the one that may that is just awesome. Yeah, I break. Uh, yeah, uh, Togashi Yoyoi, fantastic art, definitely worth its rare spot. Uh, free force for five gold with a relevant three chi for five gold too. Three yeah. chi for five gold as well with a very relevant battle action, which for a lot of dragon decks is costless because we've started Ring of Air in play. Yeah. Well, it's not so costless, it's because you still use the Ring of Air. Yeah, yeah, but essentially costless, I guess, is what I want to say. Um, bow, bow, yayoi to destroy a target attachment. With force less you could just stop there. Yeah. Like, there's done. no, there's no, how many four force attachments are there? Elephant calf. I think you like four. Yeah. yeah. Elephant yeah. calf, yeah. like. Yeah. Did yeah. we there's mention the that dragons? Many four force attachments. Yeah. And did we mention the dragon's really good at running weapons, anyways? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> four force attachments are even out of the question here. I mean, fantastic personality overall. Uh, we'll see. A lot of play in many different dragon variations just because of that ability. Um, and yeah, th that's all I really have to say. That clearly, above and beyond the best personality for dragon in this set. It's kind of sad when a like non boxable three force with bow destroy a conditional attachment is like a really good personality. That's true too. Like. Yeah, it's really like that. Just sh goes to show how low the power level is in this environment. Yeah, yeah. But that said, like very good personality. She basically says bow destroy an attachment. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see the artwork of her destroying an elephant cavalry. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of five five cost line guys, Ekoma, uh, Sh Sh Shinugo, Shungo, Shungo. Shungo. Just pronounce everything phonetically. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's like based on Japanese, so everything's gonna just be spelled out phonetically, basically. Yeah. The soup person's okay. Yeah, I mean, Lion already have another two one cav reserve guy. I think also cost. What, yeah, because does he cost five like, as well or six? I think mean, he, he costs six. six. He costs yeah. six. Okay. He's also, oh, but he's destined. He's or something. also destined too. He's destined. Yeah. That, yeah, that's why he costs six because he's destined. Essentially the same guy. He's um, also in contract, which is meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, I'm okay with with dragons cavalry. Uh, the more important thing for this guy specifically is also a scout. 
Yeah. Yep. Mm, that's that's all I I can say about it. Fairly solid overall. Um, five gold for what it, what it does, anyways. So five gold, three forest reserve, and scout yeah. cavalry. Like this guy's fine. He'll find a place in scout decks. I don't think he'll find a place in like tactician kind of versions, mm -hmm. even if they run a scout theme. But in pure scout decks, like he's he's perfectly fine. Kitsu uh, Asato. Yep. Two, three, four, five. Uh, Scorpion players ignore the honor requirement and home battle bow. Give a enemy follower personality minus two force. Uh, that this deck isn't uh, is obviously nowhere near to the point it's playable right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean that being said, <laughs> on on my show I've seen a lot of different interesting attempts at this. Yeah. Um, and I, it, it just, it gets there relatively quick, but it still loses by the time it gets there. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's, it's like at 41 and losing the last province. It's not quite there yet, but it, it's interesting that these, that they're trying to throw more Shugenji in here. Um, that's basically they're, it. They're building a base for mm -hmm. a, a theme that will come later, maybe. Yeah. Like, in, Part two. Really, yeah. Maybe. By then, it should be should be playable enough that there's enough cards for it, right? Yeah, probably. We'll see. I mean, like this card is obviously setting up for um a later date. That's the uh, mm -hmm. uh, setting up for a deck that will exist at a later date. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and then our other Kitsu, uh, the Eco. Yeah, Is or, it? yeah, the Echo. Yeah. Essentially Lico. the same thing. Uh, yep. The 10 on a wreck is what makes it hard to deal with. 10 gold is another one that makes it hard to deal with. Again, in the yeah. rare spot, but uh, open, create an ancestor. Like, we've seen Lion Ancestor themes before. Uh, again, this will be something that happens a lot later. Not much to say about it right now. Yeah. Uh, I make I make a spud. What am I going to do with a yep. spud? I don't know. It's just there. It is worth noting that it's open, so yeah. if you get, like, yeah. an onboard straighten going, you can do it both turns. Yeah. But other than that, like, exactly the same as a previous card. It's for another yeah. theme that doesn't currently exist. Yep. Kitty maker. Yep. <laughs> uh, Matsumari. Uh, battle, pay three gold, create a one force cat and non human follower, and attach it to your target personality. Uh, Shades commander. of Benica. Yeah, yeah commander, commander as well. Um, four gold for two force. Not above starting honor requirement either. So, fairly solid overall. Um, there's some interesting applications for this for this card. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, like it's. Reusable permanent force gain, but yeah, I mean, I know, she's fine. She's gonna see a lot of play in line military. Yeah, I mean, uh, Benica was was amazing. Um, I remember when they printed her, and I was like, "Wait a minute, they they printed this," um, and I remember be, her being ridiculous. Not Benica was a limited action, if I'm not mistaken. And this one being Correct. a battle. And it also made two and four two gold instead of yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they've tried to balance it a little bit, which I can understand, because uh, Benica was a little <laughs> a little good. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I can see this getting... Uh, I can see this see, seeing play, no question. Yeah, I mean, she'll see play, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, so really solid personality. Not super exciting. Never going to be broken. Probably get phased out of decks later on in the arc. And now we're up to the Mantis. Um, this is your level of expertise, I guess. Yeah, well, somewhat. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so far in the arc, the, be the, our, the best Mantis deck has been playing, um, playing Ogres and Onis. Yeah. <laughs> um, but hey, we're not partial. You know, we'll, we'll recruit anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Kitsune, yeah, even recoup me. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Case does a lot of winning, that's for sure. Uh, especially with, especially with Mantis, apparently. <laughs> uh, Kitsune uh, Beiko. Yeah. Does zero one ten gold, three personal honor, but makes a five two Mantis Bear. With fear four, but has minus two force while attacking, and I can understand why they put that trait on there. Yeah, that took a while to get through. Um, when we <laughs> in test, when it didn't have that trait, a lot of people were going, "Wait, wait, 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 hang on! You've given an honor piece, which is fine, because that's what it's there for, but you've turned them into a military deck." Yeah. Whoops! <laughs> so that had to be fixed a lot. I can imagine. Yeah. Moshi. Uh, Raiko. Yep. Uh, two two for fourth. Uh, Thunder Naval Shugenja, and she gets a big air. She has an air fire a thunder spell. Um, I actually think this personality is really good. Me I mean, too. like she's a three three naval Thunder Shugenja for box. Yeah. Like I... that's exactly what that kind of deck needed. Like they have solid personalities that have some actions on it. I don't know. Yeah, and in terms of uh, just spells overall, you're not paying that much to make her a 3-3, three, three. Yeah, so... Yeah. And it's basically, like, any good battle spell that yeah. the deck's gonna run. Like, how many non-air fire thunder spells are there that that deck wants to run? Not, probably not very many. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. one or two. Server so I mean, of Stone and your Jimbo of Earth, maybe? Yeah, I mean, you could just... For, in terms of fire spell, if you're doing the, the sort of range attack thing. I mean, Steal the Candle's Flame is free, so essentially four gold, three force, three chi. Yeah. Seems fair. Yeah. Yeah, like just solid card overall. Um, uh, Suruchi Hikari, uh, two one five gold uh, scout reserve battle bow for range two. Um, I, wish I don't know what it is, but <laughs> The, the entire deck of Mantis being, or their scouts being all bow for range attacks mm -hmm. um, seems to be very weak overall. There's a reason they all that Mantis bow for range are, twos. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's trying to play twos in the environment because of Unholy Strike. Unholy Strike, yep. Exactly. So it's like, eh. I mean, uh, maybe with Gadaya Sensei, it's like, becomes kind of a thing if you get enough of them. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the entire... I have to play all of these guys and bow them for their abilities. I'm not Dragon, I don't start with Ring of Air. Whereas they can bow all their guys for abilities and straighten them with Ring of Air. Seems yeah. totally fair for Mantis. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shirichi Yashiro, Defender of the City and Blades. Um, <laughs> this was actually fairly decent. Um... Range four, and you can straighten it if it target if its target was a Shadowlands. Um, yeah, this is like what the the crab guy wants to be. Like yeah, this yeah. is a three force for for like six, seven, eight gold unique personality. This is what it should be. Yeah, yeah. Like the other one is like conditional bow that gets bigger if it's Shadowlands or something. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. it's a three or a five if it's Shadowlands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like th this is actually a good. Like fairly costed unique. I still think I'd like I'd probably run him in most mantis decks, just because like the ranged four is actually pretty good. But I mean, like he's he's a solid card. Yeah. He'll see a reasonable mm -hmm. amount of play. Um, Uridimo, uh shot so. Uh, I have to read perfect. this guy. Permanent Conqueror for yeah, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's interesting. Seven, if you pay seven gold for him, he's a conqueror. That's interesting. Uh, it's six gold if he's con. It, it's a he's a three two for four and invests is two. Oh, three two for four. Sorry, I read that yeah. wrong. I, math is hard. Um, <laughs> this guy's, I think, actually pretty good. Yeah, like he's he's at worst like a three two boxable naval scout. Yeah, and, like that's perfectly fine by itself. Yeah, and like yeah, like 
having the ability to make him conquer just makes him better. <laughs> yeah, the, the last mantis is uh, Yuridimo, uh Yusuke. 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 Yeah. Two, two, two for five. Magistrate Colat Samurai uh, bow to produce two gold. Dishonor him to straighten him. Um, unfortunately, you only get to use that tireless open once. Because then he's can you. Can you bow for gold to buy nothing and then straighten him to bow him again? Or do you have to, when you bow gold, or bow to make gold, does it have to be paying for something immediately? That, that's the other thing with gold pooling, right? Is is how, do, how does the pooling thing work if you're not necessarily paying for anything? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think um, you have to be paying for something. I'm not entirely sure. But can you just randomly create gold pools? Possibly. Yeah, because otherwise I'd be like, I announce his tireless action, paying two gold for it or something, right? Like, or bow, bow yeah. for two gold, like during the action, and then straighten him. Like, yeah. your action, bow him in response to targeting. I got, I don't know mm -hmm. how that works, yeah. but there's a lot um, of interesting applications, basically. Yeah. If, if it works the way we think they work. Yeah. The other thing too is like now that the uh, like the actions like strategies don't have printed gold costs on them of zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I guess it makes it so that like if he goes to battle and like bow him, you can't be like reaction pay two gold pool it to pay for nothing, so I yeah. don't have to like lose the gold. Yeah. So, this guy seems really good though. Like he's two gold. He's he's like a, a mini Yashinko. Yeah. Yeah. And like on some turns he's going to be four gold like on one turn a game, I guess he's gonna be four gold. And he's a magistrate, which is like pretty meaningful because there's some good magistrate cards. Mm hmm So Yeah, I see some potential in him at some point. Yeah, I actually like him quite a bit. Uh up next are Phoenix, um Asawa Ginma. O2 for 3 gold, Cavalry Shigenja, Air Tireless Open, Straighten Ginma. Favor Monkey. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. It's, I, w I would like to use the Bat Clan Shug for more important things than getting the favor. Well, also just yeah. like Ritual ritual Monkey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's okay. A lot of people are like, oh my god, it's another Bat Clan, and it's just like, no. No, it yeah. is really not. No, the reason yeah. the Bat Clan chick is so good is because she's three fours and four chi for five gold as well. Yeah. Yeah, you get plus three plus two for two gold. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you lose cavalry, which is mm -hmm. kind of dubious value on a zero force guy, anyways. Yeah. yeah. I'll take that girl, thank you. Yeah. And, and in my I case, Mingguac is a good eleven gold personality. I'll pay eleven gold for Mingguac. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. I'll pay eleven for Mingguac too. Like, yeah, she might bit. see some play. She's just got 4 chi and, like, a bunch of keywords, but, like, yeah. I don't know. She's very not good. Yeah. Uh, Isawa Kido? Kaid, uh, Kaido? Yeah. Nope, Kido. Yeah. Kido. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, uh, zero, zero 3 for uh, f 4 gold, 3 personal honor for a fear, fear effect equal to chi and being above uh, starting honor. Yep, nail on the head. That's all it is. Starting above starting honor, boxable, and you're like, um, I'd like some force on this guy if I have to wait to buy him. Personality had one force, it would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. As it stands, coaster. Yeah. No, it's not a coaster because it's still a. It's like it's still a bow. Mm -hmm. But and it, it's cheap bow, right? Like it's cheap bow, and you don't have to bow to do it. Yeah. So she might see some play. Like she's not terrible, and having one like cheap guy over box on her is fine. Yeah, but I'd just like to see some force on it. If I have to, yeah, wait to like, buy. if she had if she had one force, I'd say she's good. If yeah. she had two force, I'd say she's insane. As it is, I think she might. She's like playable, but not yeah. much. Better. She'll yeah. probably still play. Okay. Uh, Shiba Yunchi. Um. Zero two four gold Yojimbo. Um, we yeah. missed a couple there again. Oh, there's a Isala Mira. Isala um, Mira is the next one. 
Heck, damn it. <laughs> um, blank three two zero six two conquer five Shigenja. I guess. No. Maybe sees some play. I doubt it though. Yeah. Like you're paying you're paying two gold for two gold and one chi for conquer. Yeah. So I don't see. I don't think I'll see some very much play. Yeah. Uh, Chiba Kake. Three two six six three, uh, cavalry samurai Yojimbo. Uh, feel equal to one plus the number of actions resolved from your kiho and battles and or your kiho and spells of this battle. Um, interesting applications, that's for sure. I know I've seen a couple of decks that have been trying to to use this personality. Mm-hmm. Um, mo- uh, couple of them are uh, Ray Sensei oriented, which we haven't seen. Uh, much in ivory. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, which we've seen on my show, but not much in ivory. It's interesting. Um, cavalry is a big one, big part of it. Cavalry for six gold is not bad. Yeah, I mean he's okay. I think the big problem again is like they're trying to force you to use lots and lots of shigenja and lots and lots of spells, and then you have to put in a person that doesn't. Synergize with those at all. Exactly. The fact that you use your Jimbo makes them a little bit better, but uh, I mean, he'll see some play. Like he's not a terrible personality. Uh, I don't think he'll see a lot though. I don't think he's very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're at Shiba Yuichi or Yuchi. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this while I'm while I'm doing this. Okay. Um. Samurai Yojimbo, 02542. Uh, target your Shigenja at any location. Give Yuchi a force bonus equal to his equal to the target's chi, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, battle Bow, melee 2. A kill action now, this for... This is like a boxable personality with zero force. This is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Because like, you're... He's, he's a boxable 3 or 2 that you can't blitz with. Yeah. Like, he's got a kill action that is pretty weak, but it's, like, it's still a kill action. Mm-hmm. And, like, you lose a force, but whatever. Like, it, this is a really good, well-rounded personality. He's got Yojimbo, mm-hmm. which Phoenix Samurai basically all have to have to be playable, unless yeah. they're, like, really good stab boxes or really good battle actions. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, th- this guy is really good. I think he'll see a lot of play in Phoenix. Yeah, me too. Um, Yojimbo, obviously the big keyword there. Uh, the other part of that equation that's interesting is you're paying four gold for the best uh, chi among the Shugenja that you've got. And that that in itself could be interesting when you're starting to look at four and five chi level Shugenja if you're playing them. That so, girl. That girl especially. So. Yeah. yeah, like this personality is just really, really solid all around. He's yeah. going to be 4 force most of the time. Yeah. Like, the downside is you can negate it with, like, uh, the breaking absolute, the rhythm. So breaking the rhythm, yeah. stuff like that. And you can kill him before he gets seized with ability with, yeah. like, anything. Deliberations for negative two. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he's still, like, a really good personality. All right, up to the Scorpion. Uh, Bayushi uh, Akage. Oh, yeah. 3-3-5-0. Uh, three, three, <laughs> mm-hmm. Really good. This guy is, yeah. Um, minimal investment th- for maximum efficiency seems good. <laughs> um, that's that's how I would describe this personality. Um, I, I'll pay four more gold to drop anybody by six. That seems good. Yeah, like I mean, like here's here's a really silly thing. Like, just put him in a dishonor deck and don't run any weapons. He's just three three five defender battle minus three force. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not terrible. Yeah, this guy is really good. He'll see like he should see play in pretty much every scorpion military deck of which there are, I guess, basically none. Yeah, but like scorpion military scorpion like. If you're ever going to battle, he'll probably see a reasonable amount of play. Like, this, this personality is really good, and he would be insane out of, like, 
four or five other factions. Like, yep. Uni- he would be insane in Unicorn, Dragon, Spider. Like, yeah. uh, he's just like a really, really good personality. Would be in contention for the best personality in the set if it weren't, if he were not in Scorpion. Yeah. yeah. He just in the wrong faction for that one. Yep. Wrong faction and like, yeah, wrong, wrong faction, wrong time. Like, yeah. it, once Scorpion finds like a real uh, military deck, he'll be really good. And yep. like, he, he is very deserving of his rare slot because he's a very good personality. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say this one earned its rare spot here. So, yeah, unlike yeah. some of the other ones. Unlike some of the other ones we've seen. Uh, Bayushi uh, Fuyuko? Uh, the- I mean, yeah, more dishonor stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Poke you for bow, poke you for one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fits fits with their engine. It's it does exactly what you expect it to do for a scorpion courtier. Not much else to say about it, really. Yeah. It's also kind of interesting. Like the trait on it is maybe like pretty reasonable. Can you make somebody's lobby action fail? Yeah. 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 yeah d- drop it a one person honor to zero is is yeah very relevant there. Yeah. So basically, he per- like if you have two of them out, then Crane can just never lobby. Yeah. So, like this, this guy is actually maybe some application in the the honor versus dishonor thing. Yeah. But I still don't think that's ever finishing before minute seventy eight. No. Yeah. Uh, Bayushi Jinja. This guy's good. Yeah. yeah. Another another I mean, one that earned, earned its rare spot for sure. Yeah, he's basically got like super destined like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't you can't buy him in the first couple of turns, and there aren't a lot of great non unique political strategies around right now. But the fact that he is like half card draw, half tutor, is just like really really solid. Mm-hmm. Like he he's a card that gets better as the arc progresses because the range of things that you can get back just increases a lot. Yeah. Uh, Bye, Sheik. Koto uh, Murray. This is interesting. F- if they ever find a uh, military deck with their sensei, uh, this guy could be quite good for them. He tested yeah. really well when I was uh, when I was testing uh, the Scorpion military decks overall. Uh-huh. Just because um, expendable Yojimbo, so final sacrifice fodder. Plus, when I come into play for an extra two gold, I dishonor two guys and activate my sensei. Yeah. Seems solid for for that gold cost. It's just that the deck's not there. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Like, it can even go in dishonor. Yeah. So like it dishonors two guys, which is really solid. And it does have to be lower, which means that you're not going to hit a lot of crane or lion, or maybe unicorn battle maidens, I guess. But like, expendable three force dishonor stuff. Probably a pretty good card for Dishonor. Maybe not a 3 of, but it's definitely going to be some people who play him. Yeah. The Junction keyword is randomly interesting, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, there's a lot of pieces potentially for Scorpion Military. Yeah. It's actually one of the first decks I tried to build as when Ivory came out, but it didn't work out too well. Uh, Shoshiro uh, Seidao. Um,. Our, our ninja spy that passes out poison counters. I really hope Chi Death is not a thing. <laughs> I guess I'm a, a more okay if it's like battle Chi Death, but like, I really just hope Chi Death doesn't become a thing again. Yeah, me too. Um, couple on the couple decks on the show uh, had uh, battle Chi Death, which was uh, it was interesting. Uh, Scorpion Ninjutsu. I just don't think it's it's fast enough. I think it takes far too long to build to be efficient, and but if it was a thing, this guy would be very solid. Yeah, yeah, I think he's pretty good. Like, I don't know the the minus one minus one permanent is pretty good. He's a boxable, and he's he's a ninja and a samurai, so you could put him into a lot of things. Like, he doesn't bow to do his his action, so like he plays really nicely with KO also. I don't know. Like, there's just a lot of like really small things that are going for a lot of the scorpion personalities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I'll probably try to build another scorpion military deck. I don't know if I will, but 
He also kills all like X ones really easily. So yeah, That's yeah, and, and there are quite a few of those in, in the format. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spider up next, and uh, we'll start with uh, Daigatsu Atsushi. Three three five gold duelist expendable battle fear two. Um, doesn't really have a deck, unfortunately. Um, but he's really, I mean, flavor is really cool on this card, but he just doesn't have a deck to fit in right now, does he? Nope. No. I mean, you could just remove Duelist and he'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. He's not bad. He's got a battle action, which you can, like, combine with some other stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, he's just, like, 3 3 for 5 expendable with the small battle action. He's mm -hmm. fine. I don't think he fits into anything right now, but he'll definitely see some play, if not now, then down the line. Just a really solid personality. Well, while we're while we're talking about solid personalities, <laughs> Daigatsu Teru, oh my goodness, um, yeah, Case, I think you had this in a. Was it you that had this in a deck? Um, playing on stream against Anthony. Uh, I mean, probably he's yeah. in. So I think I think this personality is actually going to be overplayed. Yeah, because so he's like so hyped right now, mm -hmm. yeah. and like it's not unreasonable because he's very very good. Yeah. But I think he will be played in decks that don't necessarily want to run him because like the best part of him is you get to rearrange the top five cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously he, he's basically a non spider. He's pay six gold, draw two cards, and that's not bad. But you remember, you are paying six gold, and you are using a dynasty slot. Yeah, yeah. Like there are other cards that can do that. So the fact that you get to like it's like a pseudo tutor and draw two is like the biggest part. But I don't think a lot of factions are going to be paying six gold like just out of hand for this. Like obviously, he should go in pretty much every spider deck. Yeah. Um, anything that is searching for like key cards is is something that he should go in. Yep. Um, but, like, I wouldn't just, like, throw him into, like, a Dragon Kensai dueling deck. Or a yeah. Dragon Kensai non-dueling deck, mm -hmm. I should say. Or, like, I wouldn't throw him into, like, Phoenix, Shugenja, Military or something. Just because, like, you can't afford to spend six gold on nothing, yeah. basically. Yeah. For me, this guy has the most interesting application in for Dragon in Enlightenment. Yeah. Because... Yeah. There are so many things you could do just paying six gold for this guy. Um, I've been trying to work him into a couple of different builds, but uh, he's really something else. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to have my statement be saying that he's not insane because he is. Yeah, yeah. like he is incredibly powerful, <clears throat> but he doesn't just go into everything. Yeah. He goes, granted, he can go into anything and be fine, but most of the time you're looking for better than just fine. Yeah. Um, I think he can go into a lot of decks and be good, and he'll go into some decks and just be absolutely insane, like Enlightenment or yeah. like Dueling decks. Yeah. But he, he, he is very good. I think we should temper... Uh, the expectations for him because at the end of the day he is 6 gold for 2 cards which is yeah. only an okay deal yeah yeah uh, now we're up to the Susumu's uh, Susumu uh, Misuki uh, this card is essentially a setup for what's coming up <laughs> uh, that, that's all I can say about it um Spider Honor, very obviously, no one thought it would be a thing until they saw some cards in TCS. It's coming and it's interesting. <laughs> this is this is one of the pieces that it it's gets. Not, it's coming and it's good. It's coming and it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll say that that it's coming and it's interesting. A lot of creative deck builds are going to come out for the Spider Honor thing. This is this is one of those pieces that's interesting. I'll pay four gold to take the favor. Is pretty good. For for that for that undeveloped theme so far, and now we get to Emperor Palpatine himself. Yeah, uh, Susumu Tagawan. I send my Sith apprentices to die. 
and uh, they take you with me. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah, insane level. Ridiculous. Um... I think this guy is actually the best person in the set. Yeah. Agreed. I, I don't... Taro is probably the most used, or going to be used the most. But I think this guy is the best person in the set. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Um, and, yeah, after I heard Anthony say... Uh, clone, uh, tar, um, using the uh, the phrase Emperor Palpatine, it was just like, okay, sold. <laughs> yeah. I'm Cause... actually, like, the deck that I'm trying to use him in is actually a military deck using him and Daigatsu Endo. Yeah. And then a bunch of, like, really cheap guys. And it works pretty well. Like, y you basically pay seven gold for, like, a holding or for, like, another stronghold. Yeah. With, like, a bunch of resistance against Dishonor. And, like, this, this, this personality is very, very good. Like, yeah. I think collection. I think Sparks was actually trying a deck like that out uh, against Anthony, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on stream. Uh, it might have been. Uh, my most recent conversation with Sparks about Endo is is no because he's too expensive, and I'm just like, but Takuan is in the environment. You have to think about it. Yeah. I mean, that is a reusable kill action. Period. And every time well, Endo comes destined. back, you draw a card. Yeah. yeah. Like, so. It, the problem I had the problem that it was a little bit too slow, but the little bit too slow was not Endo's fault, and the, most of the games that I was winning was because of Endo. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if he's like I don't I don't know if if Endo fits into this thing, but I think that deck is certainly going to be something to think about because it it does have a lot of kill, like yeah. way more so than pretty much any other deck in the environment. Agreed. A dynasty side, anyways, and yeah. yeah, like resistance to dishonor is an insane part of the, that. Just like just free resistance to dishonor, yeah, and it's just like it's it's really really good all around. Yeah, uh, the unaligned per personalities are up next. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about in these. Um, uh, you guys. Mm. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Not really at all. I mean, uh, I had been asked about Onera for for dueling decks at a yeah. dragon, and I'm just like, not really. I'm not, actually I, looking at like Ikiren and Onera in like a uh, the so the the Oath of Fealty deck yeah. out yeah. of Phoenix or Crane. Yeah. Um, like the Oath of Fealty deck actually has like a lot of threes and fours naturally, so mm. maybe you can run like a couple of duels in Onera. Onyara. Mm -hmm. Oneyara. Yeah. And yeah. Ikiren is just like another cheap battle action Ronin. But yeah. yeah, other than like kind of fringe not gimmick, but like fringe like tier one point five, tier two decks. I don't mm -hmm. see any of the unaligned things seeing play. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the Oni that make attaches goblin followers? He's okay. I mean He's expensive, but he's a lot of force eventually. Yeah. I don't know. He'll see some play in, like, the Ogre Bushi style Mantis decks for sure. Yeah. But, I don't know. Other than that, yeah. I don't. Like, he, he'll see some. Like, it's the same as the other two. He'll see some fringe play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe he's really good, but I don't think he'll see a ton of play. Especially because lose three honor for a lot of factions actually means, like, lose seven to ten honor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and the last group up is the unicorn. Um, they got a couple of um, ID personalities. Um, mm -hmm. You got Arigaki, um, who is a one-two uh, courier merchant that pays gold equal to her personal honor, which only can be used for an invest invest cost. Yeah. This personality could actually just spark an entire archetype. Really? Like, That's interesting. Yeah, like unicorn invests. Like, I, I mean, I don't know how many invest personalities there are that you really want to be running. Mm -hmm. But like, 
th there's a lot of like really solid cards that come with invest costs in the like, not just unicorn but like all over the place mm -hmm. and like being able to basically have a personality that's also holding yeah is is pretty good i mean it, it would probably be an honor deck i want to say not 100 percent sure but it'd probably be an honor deck but like uh, there, there's a lot of things that are like pretty solid like uh there's a, a bunch. I think there's like what four followers with invest, mm -hmm. something like four that. Seems right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It, it it's just like unicorn already has a pretty good economy, and this makes their economy better. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if an invest deck becomes a thing, this guy's gonna be really good. Until yeah. then, coaster. Right. Yeah. But the. Uh... Like the spider honor deck that's coming and interesting, the unicorn honor deck that's coming, obviously with uh, with the gold that's that's showing up from the e day side of things is also interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just not there yet. the 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 e day courtier deck will be something to see when it comes out fully, but they're just fleshing it out right now. Uh, the other uh, Ide is uh, uh, Kosaka. Mm -hmm. Two two for six. Uh, three personal honor has invest to creates a bout holding that bows produces one gold and then economic home battle open pay one to straighten a courtier unicorn or spider personality. She's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Battle open straighten is really good. Yeah. I mean, like even if you don't get the the one gold holding, which is perfectly fine. Like, she's still a really solid personality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I don't know. Another invest effect that like, you start... The more you invest cards you see, the more you start eyeing Ida Agaki, but... Yeah. Like, I don't know. She's she's perfectly fine by herself. Yeah. A little bit expensive for Justice Drayton, but like very good as it stands. I mean, she's yeah. a ring of air. That is what yeah. she is. It's a, it's a ring of air body. The The home part of it is what makes makes her really good, is you never have to risk her. Ever. I kind of wish so, her a tireless. Me too. But that might be, like, a little bit too good. I don't know. She's she's definitely not, like, a straight military card, but she could see some application there also. Yeah. yeah. Just utility support is what I what I refer to her as for a lot of unicorn decks if they're willing to try. Yeah. yeah. This is really good. Um, uh, next up are the, the Death Priest in the set. Uh, Moto. Uh, there's a couple, aren't there? Yeah, there's a couple of Death Priest. Yeah. There's a couple yeah. Death yeah. Death. yeah. Uh, Erd, uh, Erdina. Um, uh, two one for five gold. Expendable. Shugenja. Tireless Battle. She commits a puku, bow a target enemy card. Yeah. Not that it really exciting. I've had this conversation with a couple of people, actually, and uh, mostly Unicorn players in general. Uh, both of them said, had your uh, reaction there, Brad. Mine is the complete opposite. I think there are a lot of applications where a tireless bow a target enemy card and draw a card is very useful. But I guess with 2-1, that stat line, not not entirely sure. It might see play in some, some random fridge decks, like I come up with those once in a while. Yeah. But I actually really liked uh, Moto Air Dude in Test. I think he'll see a lot of play. Like, it's really solid. You have, like, it's a body with a battle action when you need it, and it's just a body when you need it. I mean, expendable, like, is the most important part. Like, you're you're paying five gold to choose between the body, the card, and the battle action, and like, you always get the worst of those. Mm -hmm. But that's usually fine. Just sort of getting an incremental advantage at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's your opponent has no good way to deal with him. Like, they can't bow him because it doesn't really do anything. You don't want to send home a two-one. 
Yeah. You can unholy strike it, but it's expendable, so you just draw the card. And like yeah, like it, it's not that it's like really good or really efficient or anything like that. It's just like annoying to deal with and the, the fact that it's just super annoying to deal with is kind of enough to uh make it a highly playable card. And the last one is uh Utaku uh Saiken. Uh, stable master yeah <laughs> i like this <laughs> great guy, keyword yeah, this, this great guy. keyword <laughs> yeah it's like okay he can't give cavalry but i can give reserve to a non-unique cavalry personality in a province as a home engage yeah by the way i think this guy is really good that, me too that wasn't insane in draft either i might add <laughs> <laughs> Can't you believe that? You have a bridge to sell us. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he, he makes all of the non-unique unicorns, uh, it, like, effectively any of them reserve. Yeah. So, like, it's just, like, it just makes it harder and harder and harder for people to defend unicorn. Yeah. Like, I liked the whole reserve concept being, like, a mobility thing, so scouts and, and cavalry personalities and unicorn in general. Um, I think this guy is is really good, and I'm glad that there. It makes me glad that there are a lot of infantry unicorns, because otherwise yeah. this guy would just be like over the top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing bad to say about this guy, really. Um, I mean, he doesn't work on defense, really. No. But but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> defense. A unicorn play defense. <laughs> Last time yeah, I checked, nobody in Ivory played defense. Province. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I, I checked in ivory defense leads to bad things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yep. All right, that's all the dynasty side. So next up is the follower suite. Um, what followers do you guys think that uh, are going to uh, be some breakouts? Aside from the obvious one. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Besides the obvious one, but yeah, yeah, we'll get There's actually a couple of them. Yeah. So I think the obvious one is Cavalry Escort. Yeah. yeah. Has gotten a lot of talk. Yeah. And for good reason. Like, unopposed, basically unopposed reserve mm -hmm. for an extra two gold that you have to attach the Cavalry person to. Like, if you have one personality at a province, it usually means you're taking a province. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, the card is really, really good. Uh, the other thing... And this is this is just a combination piece. And as a dragon player, I like combos. Um, Shinjo Selu, the one that searches for cavalry followers, making this particular follower searchable, is yeah. Um, yeah. So let's to, just, to say that yeah, let's just say that I've already built that deck and it's insane. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this this card alone, it is one of alongside uh, cloth market is the reason Unicorn is going to be as powerful as it is going into the Gen Con environment. Alongside the Strength of Dishonor. There's a lot of factors that are benefiting Unicorn right now. Yeah. I don't think any deck that goes second to Unicorn, any military deck that goes second to Unicorn will have a chance. Agreed. Like, that might be a little bit bold to say, but, like, it's, I think it's pretty true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you just can't keep up with... Like, between the reserve, like, the reserve, the cavalry, this card, like, mm -hmm. I can't think of a good, effective way to defend against Unicorn, ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. this is one of the cards that I that I advocated when I saw. I was like, you've got to be kidding me, right? Um, and that was, the, I, the first thing I wanted to do was build Unicorn, because... I saw this and all the other tricks that they already had, and then and then Saiken, and I was like, okay, this deck's just insane. Oh, and I have a person mm -hmm. that can search for the follower. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Like, the only thing that's maybe a saving grace for Unicorn is that all their personalities suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't find more than, like, four personalities. Like, I, every time I build a Unicorn deck, I'm like... Oh, this guy is really bad, but I guess he's better than other personalities, so I run him. Like, you have, like, Mingwok and 
like Chuna, uh, Chinua, mm -hmm. and then I don't really know. Like, <laughs> there's just not a whole lot, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll we'll see like some unicorn blitz decks though for sure because that yeah. that's going to be a, a pretty good, pretty good deck I think. Assault unit is actually a really nice card. I like that one too. Think of it as basically a red card for three gold. It says fear Game three, two force, and fear three. Fear yeah. three that you can combine with other cards in the unit and then yeah. make a two force follower. Like it's actually I think really good. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, like, small fear effects. Mm -hmm. Like, there's fear 2 all over the place, a couple of fear 1s, and throwing this down with, like, any of those guys, you make, like, a fear 4, 5, or 6, and get a follower protection. Like, it's, it's a pretty solid little card all around. I think it'll see a lot of play. For good reason. I think the card yeah. is very good. I, I, I see it in Lion a lot because it fits the gold really well for them. Yeah. Um, pr maybe in Spider as well. Mm -hmm. um, if they're looking to play small attachments, that would be one that would be really, really good for them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very solid card. And the fact that it that you don't have to telegraph it in any way, shape, or form, which seems to be a thing with a lot of the big follower, the, the super good followers in this set, is they they there's no real telegraphing of either of these coming into play, Cavalry, Escort, or Assault Unit. So Well, assigning a three-force guy to a province might yeah. be. Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there's a lot of little tricks uh, that you can do just by assigning one unit, like Advance Warning Back to the Front Trick, for instance. Mm -hmm. is an I think that's another reason why you're looking at Cavalry and what they're able to do. There's just so many little things that make them hard to deal with. It's just their suite of personalities is... Like Case had said, pretty, pretty horrible to balance that out. Yeah. All right. Um, there's actually there's one other card that I one other follower that I really like in the set. Mm -hmm. That's the Zokujin. Zul yeah, the, Z the, the Zilkits family. family. I actually like that too. Yeah. Like, it's only a fear four that targets a personality if you're attacking, or it's it's only a battle action if you're attacking. But it's a fear four that it can target a person through followers. And, like, with Okura is released, yeah. you can actually kill someone through followers with a fear action with, with this card. Yeah. Like, it doesn't go into a lot of decks. Like, at, it probably only, like, Lion, Spider, maybe, yeah. like, Crane as well. But I think this card is actually very, very solid. Yeah. I think you'll see a lot of play in military decks. Yeah. I was going to say, once again, it fits the Lion Curve of Gold at 3, and it's just... <laughs> uh, and the crane fits. curve of gold at my box makes extra gold. What now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all of my exactly. gold holdings are good. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of application for this card. That's for sure. All right, now we get into the items. Um, what kind of cards uh, in the items stand out to you guys? I hate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that outright? And I hate all of them. I, uh, you know, I looked at the items in the set, and like maybe like tested blade is okay, mm -hmm. but like five is kind of awkward. Like maybe Kiko is okay because it's a, well, plus one personal honor is actually kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But like, man, these items are really bad. Like, okay. uh, 8 yeah. gold for 3 force <laughs> with, like, bow a card. Like, I don't know, like, 7 gold for 3 force destined. Like, I don't know, these these items are just not playable. Uh, going through the, the whole test cycle of trying to make these items playable, um, that was very few and far between. Uh, if you, you get most, most of you know, uh, the deck that I play currently, I would not replace any card in that deck with with any of these items. Um, yeah, I mean, the only one that was remotely interesting was Singing Blade, but after I load up a bunch of Force on that, if you seal it for two gold, I am going to be the saddest person in the world. Yeah, like pretty much. So, I, I mean, could like, not make any of these cards work. 
Yeah, as just, much just as like I want consider to. like, I mean, consider like bow of ritual blessings versus like sodom not sodom but uh, what's the one from last arc that oh, was a two one for three? That's bow to bow a card. I'm trying to remember it too. Um, I think it started with an S. Anyways, it's like you're paying five gold for plus one plus one. Yeah. All, it's all, like all, uh, yeah. These these weapons are just horrible. Yeah, I mean one of the random <laughs> applications for for one of these weapons was when I was testing crane in playtest was untested blade, which by the way has great flavor text. Um, <laughs> uh, the only time I was able to really really take advantage of this was uh, I attached this blade and then play come one at a time, <laughs> like out of a crane defensive dueling whatever. That was the only item that I I literally tried to use, and I'm just like, there's there, yeah. I I basically repeat my previous statement that I hate all of them. <laughs> yeah, I think tested blade is like maybe okay. Yeah, untested blade might see some play in like a defensive dueling deck, but maybe even offensive one. But most of these things just suck. Yeah, yeah. Like they're just not wor- this. They're just not worth the gold costs. Or they just don't have a big enough effect. Like, you never get enough force, and you never get a big enough effect for the gold that you spend. Yeah. Like, seven gold, three two draw card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that. Like no. Like yeah. sp- It spends seven gold to spend seven gold again and put nothing on the table. Really. Yeah. Like, I-, I mean, I guess force is really important in this arc, but like. You can't afford to spend seven gold on a three force item when you're already spending yeah. seven gold on a three force personality. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's a reason my dragon deck really only spends yeah. four gold on three force items or three yeah, force it's followers. Liter- it's literally more than a personality for less than you get from a personality. This is like yeah. Awaken yeah. Naginata and Bow of Ritual Blessings. Both of them are just like you would always rather buy. Pretty much any personality in your deck than either of those yeah. weapons. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe Osano's bow will be like something just because it's five gold for a range attack, but yeah, it looks like a draft card. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, the the two senseis in this set: Aranai Sensei and uh, Sugihime Sensei. Yeah. Okay. Aranai Sensei. Go get him. Yeah, well... Yeah. <laughs> I was quite happy to see Mantis on that card, but obviously she was a Mantis spider anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's basically all the military clans, all the potentially not military clans. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad that Dragon didn't, like, randomly migrate up there. Yeah, because my <laughs> goodness was I wanting that. <laughs> I bet you were. Yeah. Um... Aaron what I can we gonna, s- just it's gonna yeah. spawn so many decks. Like, yeah, all five factions that can run it probably will have a deck that does run it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe has, the exception being Spider. Yeah, but but there are a lot of interesting applications that get it, get into it. Like I've seen Crab Dishonor run this. Uh, I played against you, Case, recently on stream. You were playing Lion out of it. Yeah. Uh, Mantis has a couple of applications for it. I mean, it gives rise to a lot of interesting uh, deck building creativity, uh, especially with cards like uh, Death at the Winds being now available for everybody with three G. The Sun Returns and the Sun Returns and as well. And the Sun Returns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this card is like single handedly going to create the most archetypes in, yeah. of any card in the set, just because. It automatically makes every single tactical card accessible to all five of those factions. Yep. Yeah. Like, it's one of the reasons why you might consider the 2-3 monk from this set with the weird fear trait thingy over, like, the 2-2 blank monk yeah. from Ivory Base. Just because he's got 3 chi, like, it's all your personality to 3 or more chi. It doesn't have to be a samurai or anything. Yeah. So, like, you now have a 2-3 boxable tactician that can play Death of the Winds and bow for uh, Sun Returns. Like, it, th- this card is... Really, really important. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember been, playing a yeah. Koto Sensei back in the day. Of course, uh, there, you know, same same thing except for we didn't get a Providence strength decrease and a starting honor decrease. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was it was the nuts. Yeah, but, you're uh, looking at a lot of. I, uh, no, sorry, Case, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say, like, when I first started playing, one of my when I was like being taught how to play, mm -hmm. um, one of my friends was playing Kensen Gaka. <sighs> The lion thing that was all your guys with three or more chi have tactician, yep. but don't can't gain force from it. So I was like, I looked at this and saw it, and I'm like, the, the actually it's kind of interesting because like the minus one personal honor is really big for like lion, crab, and unicorn because a lot of the better three or more chi personalities have exactly box honor rec. Yep. Yeah. Um, like it just makes things a little bit more awkward for a lot of them, but like this this card is really good. It's gonna do so. Like, it's it's gonna be a top tier deck somewhere. Yeah. I don't know which faction. I assume it's going to be either lion or unicorn. Those are the most likely candidates because those are the of the five. Those are the best clans right now. Currently, yes. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> like this, yeah, this card is just insane. All right, um, Sukihime Sensei. On uh, the other hand. Um, <laughs> then we get the other side. <laughs> then we get the other side of the coin, which makes Dragon Clan Raven so sad. Um, I did bring up, uh, I think I was playing a Scorpion Dishonor player on my show, uh, and I had brought up the interesting fact that this essentially waves loyal from certain core tiers and gives you certain deck flexibility for, for the clans involved. Are there any unique loyal personalities, though? That's the thing. Um... Not many right now. I think there were two total that we were looking at. I don't remember because somebody brought it up. I just said that that's something interesting to look at. Um, other than that, the minus one production is really bad for this overall. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, if it didn't have that minus one gold, it would be probably insane. Yeah. Like, you could give it minus two, minus oh, minus one. Yeah. And I think it would still see a lot of play. Yeah. But I don't think... With the minus one gold cost, it makes it really difficult to use. Yeah. And the other side of that is with with the uh, the clans that made it available for, Dragon and Phoenix have almost zero application to use this. Yeah. Well, it lets, it lets you play Dishonor with like all the Scorpion people out of Dragon. I guess, yeah, but once it, it's only <laughs> once a turn, right? So you're like, um, okay. Um, there is another slight problem with the card. If you go back and reread it, unless uh, uh, unless they worded it incorrectly, mm -hmm. uh, it gives the personality your clan alignment, mm -hmm. uh, and then but it still keeps the other clan's clan alignment. Yep. So if you bring a scorpion, if um, um, if you bring well, it's a only monks though. To play, yeah, it only works once. So unless that personality dies, mm -hmm. you're only going to be able to use this ability on one of them from that clan. Yeah. Yeah, there there are a lot of things with this where I I just don't see it working. Yeah. It's it's going to give rise to a lot of interesting niche tier three tier four level decks. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to see no. them in, in the bottom tier tables as experiments, but other than that, no. I mean, it, this... it works fine, I think. I don't think the the action works, or it doesn't work. Like, you bow it to give a guy a clan alignment permanently. Yeah. And then he just keeps a, your clan alignment for the rest of the game. Yeah. So... I don't know. But it's... if he has a plus box honor wreck, you better, you damn well better be buying in that turn. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's uh, if it didn't have the minus one gold cost, it would probably be too good. So maybe it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like it's just yeah, it's just not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it and it's, been... it's only courtiers too. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it it could have been worse if they would have uh, if they don't have if they don't have Sawana Dojo in this arc. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, you can do, like, Suwana Dojo Blessing and stuff like that. So it's but... a little better than it used to be, but it's still not a great... No. 
Yeah, I mean, you're setting yourself down to lion gold and leaving yourself with not lion personality base. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, it, uh, it's just, that is just painful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, into the spells now. Um, what kind of, uh, are there any of the spells that you guys find interesting? Yeah. Yeah, there are a couple. Um, interrupt the Void's flow. Uh, you take Surge one time. Yeah. One time, Taylor. One time. Uh, it, it, it showed up on, on my radar during playtest. Didn't change much throughout the entire process. Uh, just a solid card overall. Uh, it might see some level of play. Um, but it, it takes a lot of practice to play effectively. Is was Would be my opinion on it. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Just anything that reads negate a battle action, which is few and far between. I mean, we were just talking about the sun returns. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another one. But this this gives uh, gives rise to a lot of interesting things that you can do. Yeah, I mean it does cost two gold, but who cares? You put it on a Shigenja that you don't want to die, and then it just returns into play, and everything is unbowed. Like yeah, like ignoring entering play costs and effects. It doesn't mean like you can. You can put it on a Shigenja that you don't want to die, bow him and everything in his unit for a bunch of stuff, and then just negate a random battle action and yeah. just blink your guy. Like, it, it's a negate and a straighten, which is just insane. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, I don't know. It's a really good card. Uh, it'll, it's one of the cards that's it's weird that I'm going to say it this way, but like, it gets better the better the person using it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, like, it's not a card that someone that's, like, not experienced is going to just be able to pick up and use yeah. to perfect effect. Like, it's going to take someone who's, like, experienced and someone who's, like, got a plan for it and, you know, knows when to pop it and when to not. Mm -hmm. and, but you get one of those people and it's going to be really good. Yeah. Just, a lot of use, a lot of utility to this card. There's, uh, let's see. The card that I was looking at is they reprinted Outer Walls. <laughs> except they made it a spell, and it also hits yeah. your <laughs> Legacy of Tadaka. Yeah, you can equip yeah. this and interrupt, and then interrupt Bow and destroy yeah. this spell. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting, like, Shigenjin now has. You can basically run four cards that negate destruction mm -hmm. with this, the Turtle Shell, Word of Air, and now Interrupt the Void's Flow as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and, and you can run the Yojimbo Redirect card too. So you have 15 cards that just save your Shigenja. Like, yeah. there's just so much stuff that you can do. And it's just like... Yeah, this, this card is just... Like, it's not that good, but it's definitely better than the Turtle Shell for, for Shigenja decks. Yeah. yeah. So, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, another interesting spell, uh, looking into the soul, uh, look into the soul. Um, I know... Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie was talking about this card going in his <laughs> Dishonor deck. This oh, does not surprise gosh. me in the slightest. <laughs> oh, Donnie. Hey, Donnie. Yeah. hey. Um, so I can't proclaim courtiers. Eh. We don't have any courtiers. What are you talking about? Um, yeah. Reducing honor gains for on um, proclaims by half this you can just cheat around it down. That seems good. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it basically shuts down any incidental honor gains. Yeah. Like, just completely shuts down the incidental honor gain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Scorpion might even run this. Like, any Dishonor deck could think about running this. And, mm -hmm. like, it's a Fate deck, or it's a Fate card that you can run as a uh, honor meta card. But, like, I, I don't know. This, this card is, like, one of those cards I don't think should exist, really. Because, like, let's say you're just... A, you're just, like, at a Cote, 
and you're like, oh, there's a lot of honor here. I just don't want to lose the honor all day. I'm playing Phoenix Military with Taruko, and I'm just going to play like, just, just standard Phoenix Military of some kind. I'm just going to jam three of these into my deck. <laughs> and it's like, you get three of them, and you play against an honor deck, and you just sit your personalities at home, and you're like, I don't know, maybe you run uh, Shrine of Hachimon, so you can straighten them. Yeah. It's just like, you you negate six honor gain a turn. Like, no honor deck's going to win. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't like the... I don't like the design concept behind this card. Yeah. Um, anything else? The, the, Visions um, of Darkness. <laughs> yeah. Visions of Darkness I thought was very interesting, uh, especially for the Mantis, po the Kitsune Pokemon deck. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. being, being able to search up your non-unique personalities with your clan alignment uh, with a spell, uh, could be very useful to pull up the right personality that you could, uh, you know, you've got the one that bows for, bows for an honor and has, uh, and also, uh, invest two gains in honor, so. <laughs> I'd also like a bear, please. <laughs> like, yeah. find, yeah. find the, Sh the Shugenja spirit <laughs> that you want. That's, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. This is a card that'll get better, like, as the arc progresses. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I think the only deck that really cares that much will be the Mantis deck, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think this card is really interesting. I'll be looking for it to be uh, as it gets better down the arc. Um, but now we get to the lovely section of uh, strategies. Oh, cool. <laughs> <Big> <laughs> section. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in saying this right, um, we were talking about uh, political strategies earlier with Bayushi Jinja. Yeah. Uh, there's hey, one right here. Hey, look. We gave you one to get back. Yeah. Super, super good. Oh my gosh. Uh, this card in the untapped tournament, uh, the first match that I casted today, uh, this card won the game by itself. Absolutely ridiculous. We're talking about a growing rift. It's wow. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> yep. The card is really good. I mean, it's just insane late game card. Mm -hmm. because it, it, it's early game and late game that has the most application, because, like, early game, you don't have that many personalities to attack with, so you need to send them together. Late game, there's not enough locations to go at, so you have to send them together. Like, this card is just really, really good at almost any point in the game. <laughs> and the fact that it makes them lose honor at, like, the same time is just insane. Yeah, the, the the card is absolutely nuts. Uh, <laughs> I know Anthony was talking about running it, uh, seeing it in all sorts of decks besides just Dishonor and Honor. Yeah, you could run it in Honor. You could. I don't think you'll see it in any military decks, but I mean, I could be wrong. It, it's not like the worst kind of effect to run. Yeah. We get to go to one of my favorites, Case, because I highlighted it on stream, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, the dueling meta of dueling metas is uh, Deny the False Form. Can we talk about that one for a second? Yes. Hey, look. It looks like a Fallen Dueling meta card, hmm. but it just makes Fallen Dueling better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you, you can challenge... With uh, demonstrating technique, mm -hmm. you can challenge your own fallen dueling guy into anything, and then focus this card. And since your fallen guy is going to generally be destined or expendable, it's basically one fate guard, one fate card, kill your worst personality, kill their best personality. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's a four focus in a normal duel. It's got a battle action that's relevant on both offense and defense. Like this, this card is just insane. Like I don't, 
I think that the wording on the focus effect should have been worded differently. It's like, as a focus effect, if your personality was challenged by a fallen personality or if the or a personality with a dual set higher than his opponents by yeah. three or more. Yeah. Rather than just if the challenger is fallen or the dual stats higher. Yeah. Because it's, it's just like, I mean, Raven said, like, he highlighted it in the stream, like, I challenged his Dark Naga with a weapon or something with, like, a Bojan with, an, with a, a demonstrated, demonstrated technique. technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Raven's like, oh, does he just want to pull a card from my hand? What's going on? And then I flipped Deny and it was just like, oh, Holy crap, I just lost a Dark Naga and an attachment for a Bojan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually want to talk about all the discoverings, because I think they're all good. Yeah, so do I. Like, discovering the Anvil of Earth, I originally thought was going to be one of the best ones. But after looking at all the terrains in the environment a couple of times, I realized that this is actually one of the weaker ones. And yeah. it's still really good. Like, yeah. once they print terrains with more immediate effects, um, it's going to get better and better. And right now, the only thing it really plays super well with is uh, uh, Crystal Tears. And it's like yeah. a straighten and a bow and a bow. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, like, that's, it's like, one of the weaker ones, actually. Like, discovering the Daisho of Water is really good. Oh, good yeah. lord, yeah. Like, it, it's only really applicable in, like, Lion, Crane, Phoenix, and Unicorn. And I guess, like, a little bit of Crab. Oh, and Dragon, sorry. Well, yeah. not, not even as much Dragon, because a lot of their yeah. Kansai are too. Yeah. But, like... Any any deck where a lot of the personalities have like printed actions is going to be really really good. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about discovering seeds of void? <laughs> no, not really. My <laughs> goodness, what the heck! Um, an another application for uh, what's it called for Iron Eye Sensei among other things. Oh, uh, um, yeah. This is this essentially reads and Case said it best when we were talking one time was. Here are the three... The, of the three cards that I've selected, I'm going to get the second best one no matter what. Yep. And... The I second... Think played... Well, it, the big thing is it's just three fake cards with different titles. Yeah. One of the worst things about it is, like... Just, just think about this for a second. It doesn't say non-unique. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't say strategies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just three fake cards with different titles. So, mm -hmm. let's say you're playing, for example, Fall and Dueling, and one of the cards that you show them is a Magistrate Falls. Your opponent has a card in play, and it, you have a personality you have to protect. So, obviously, that Magistrate Falls is going away. Now they can replay Game of Dice. Let's say they do it again, and show you another Magistrate Falls, and the same Game of Dice. Now they get to play game of dice, game of dice again. Like it's just it gets stupider and stupider mm -hmm. because like it, there's sometimes there's just like no way to get out of something. Yeah. Like what if you're like I have to defend and keep this guy alive, and you show like a magistrate falls and weakness exposed, like you just lost the game because yeah. you can't protect your guy anymore. So like this <laughs> this card is always going to get like. One of the two best cards, yeah, in your discard pile, yeah, and the fact that your opponent gets to kind of choose is is like kind of meaningless. Like you yeah. can almost always figure out a way for whatever you get to accomplish what you needed to, with like yeah. very few exceptions. Yeah, uh, I equated discovering the seas of the void to uh, flipping uh, dark audience in an enlightenment deck and making your opponent choose between walking the way and heart of Fudo. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. like, yeah, I get the effect I want period. End of discussion. And I mean, you always purge the heart of Fudo, but it doesn't matter because the damage is done. 
Yeah. You basically said I'm paying six gold and I get to search my deck for anything. Yeah. Right. Like, or search my discard. In this case, it's like just pay two or three. Usually going to be two. Yeah. And just get like one of the best cards back. And the longer the game goes, the better the card gets. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So. I equate this card coming from a magic uh, perspective to factor fiction. Doesn't matter yeah. what you flip, uh, it's still good for me. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit less good because you're not actually getting card advantage. Yeah, true. Originally, I read it as someone voids one, and, and you, you put the, the other, other two. two. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, why would this card ever get printed? Yeah, and I actually like, read oh, it. As... Okay, you only get one of the other two. Yeah. Okay, this card is just really, really good instead of absolutely broken. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it, it's it's just like you only like there's a limit of three for a reason. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, I, I don't even know. This card is just really, really good. Yeah, it's like unshakable, except it costs gold, and you can get anything back. Yeah, at any time, with the downside of not getting back your best card. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's dumb. <laughs> uh, I actually like the other one, too. Like, this one I think is going to be really underrated, but it's mostly your unicorn. Oh, the the Shakahachi the there? Shakuhachi. Yeah. 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 I actually like, really like it. Yeah, if you're running any quarters for unicorn, or like, if you're running any quarters for an action phase deck, this is mm -hmm. pay two gold straight in two guys. Yep. Yeah. Like, it's just it's really solid. I don't know how much play it'll see, because I don't know how much Drayton is actually a problem. But this card is actually just... I think it's really good. It's like creating order, but not really. Yeah. Um, uh, the pre-MRP creating order. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. It's, it's like yeah. pre-MRP creating order. Yeah. Uh, what else are we going to look at here? I actually like inspired leadership a lot. Yeah, the next Me too. One. Just the next card? Yeah. Yeah, just hey, the next look, card. Look, it's now, zero like, it's it's zero for tacticians. I like where this theme is going. Battle um, force and copy an ability on anybody. It's like and take an additional action to use it. Yeah. Most of the time. For free. And it's just like this card is just really, really good. Like, you copy your best battle action, and you use it immediately, <laughs> and your opponent literally cannot do a thing about it. The other part of that equation is it doesn't have to be your best battle action. It could be their best battle action. Yeah. yeah. That's the fun part. That's yeah. what makes the you card very interesting. You copy their personality as well. Which is just like, you copy the best battle action on the board. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's really good. Maybe, actually, well... I don't want to say it's the best action in the set, but it's, it's certainly close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of good straighten in the set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to talk about <laughs> the next one? Um, for for me, are we talking about relentless? Or are we still going yeah. back a ways? Yeah, relentless. Um, I would play it over a lot of very different. Um, straighten effects mm -hmm. just in general um, because the only time I really want to straighten 9 out of 10 is is, is when my uh, my opposition has bowed me and is still there yeah. um, and the other part of it is um, the, the dual meta itself is staring a lot of dragon players in the face and going it's uh, a nice bonus yeah <laughs> So, uh, like, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't see anything wrong with this card. Uh, I think it's an amazing card overall. I wish I would play it, but I, I'm not risking my focus values mm -hmm. in my dueling deck. <laughs> but my goodness, what a card. Yeah. So just just for reference, I pre errata Crane at the beginning of the season when I played in Vancouver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was playing one ivory magistrate outpost or whatever it is. Yeah. The thing that's battle straighten a personality, open straighten a magistrate. Yeah. 
and I literally never used the open action once during the entire tournament, and I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> like I, the the card was not even there as really like that much of a straighten open action kind of thing. Like it was just a battle straighten because I was already running Ring of Air. Yeah, this card is just better than that. Yeah. Like it has extra application as an anti duel card, mm-hmm. and you can get you can like pump someone out of a range attack range, or you can drop somebody into a range attack range. Yeah, card is just very very good. What else? Uh, we should probably well before we get to well no let, let me see. We should get while we get to the uh, the way of the blanks. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I think all of them bear some discussion. Yep. Yeah. Like, so the way of the crab, I actually think, is maybe the weakest one. Mm-hmm. And it has like three effects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, like, all of the way of, let, let, let me just say this right now. All of the way of's are good enough to be played. Almost all the way of's are good enough to be played in decks not of their faction. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, Way of the Crab, I had probably run one of in anything that's running Tactician Search. Mm hmm. I could see that. Like, it's a straighten with a force pump. With an anti force drop. And all for the low, low price of killing a guy that you're probably going to lose anyways if you didn't get the card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's really just no downside to this card, really. Yeah. Sometimes you'll you'll play it for just the two forests to take a province and lose your guy, but like most of the time you're going to be losing a battle and play this, and the battle has just massively swung your way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going on cards that can fit in different deck types. Uh, Way of the Crane in Dragon is pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, you mean Way of the Whoops? This is the wrong faction. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, if you're playing Dragon Dueling, this is a card that requires a lot of consideration. Um, irrefusable I'm playing more duel. Of this in my Dragon Dueling deck than the Way of the Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, during test, I did throw a lot of complaints about what Way of the Dragon was in comparison to Way of the Crane. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, send home action that has decent application. <laughs> Otherwise, bow the duel's loser seems really, really strong. Plus, random honor gain yeah. is really, really good when Dragon struggles against dishonor a little bit so i i'm more inclined to play that over the random use my sensei to bow you and get plus two force as opposed to i don't use a sensei at all bow you anyways if you decide to take this duel or i get rid of you and gain enough or or i get rid of you yeah. like so the, the only bad thing about this card is obviously your opponent gets to choose which effect hits them right. yeah so they're if it's in a close battle they get to choose Whichever one they can most easily deal with. Yeah. But, like, who cares? It's a four focus value challenge yeah. that either bows them or sends them home, both of which yeah. are fine, with just yeah. random honor gain if they bow, and yeah. a random extra effect if they go home. And if you're crane, you get to use it again. Yeah. Like, the card is really, really good. And it's a four focus value, so yeah. it's like. I mean, th- this this is like what people have been like, what dueling players have been wanting to see in their duels. And like, yep. you know, it's, if you get to play it a second time, like it's really really stupid. Yeah, but as it is right now, it's just very very good, even in not crane. Yeah, there's. I mean, there is a reason for crane that the 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 discipline cost is three. <laughs> As opposed to, because some of the other ones are like ones and twos. I know the Scorpion one is three, I think, as well. Like some of the more yeah. powerful effects are, you're looking it's, at higher. The yeah. Scorpion, I think actually, Mantis, yeah. Mantis, Spider, and Crane, I think, are three. Yeah. Oh, and, and Unicorn, apparently, yeah. So, okay. About half of them are three. Yeah. Crab is uh, one. 
and Phoenix is the one. The rest are two. Uh, Way of the Dragon. Um, if you're not running Hajatsu Sensei, this card is seemingly useless. Mm-hmm. In my yeah. opinion, a four four swing uh, with his with everybody and their mother teching, breaking the rhythm. Um, a four four swing is kind of. Uh, to be fair, it only hits breaking the rhythm. Only hits half of it. Yeah, but well, then it it ends up just being a two four swing at the end. Yeah. Um, Dishonor has no real application in Dragon, which was my number one complaint with the card when we were testing it. But we couldn't come up with a reasonable solution. I would have liked to see something... It could have been dueling and have like some application with rings or something. But at the end of the day, this is what they came up with. Um, I'm currently playing it because I still play Hijatsu Sensei. But... Um, it's just I, that you can bow a ring to bow the loser. Yeah, that would that would be something else. Something like that. Yeah. Um, or just like straighten a ring, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that might be too, too good. Yeah. Um, but overall, card's still good, as much as I don't like it in comparison to Wave the Crane. So. It's actually best used in conjunction with Wave the Crane. Because you challenge them with Wave the Crane, they decline, dishonor, move home, move back in, and then you challenge them with Wave the Dragon and Bell. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of silly. But. Yeah. Interesting application. Uh, my opinion is that well, Case had stated that uh, that Way of the Crab is the weakest. I'm I'm of the opinion that Way of the Dragon is the weakest, but I've been yeah, finding a lot of ways of to use it. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the two for sure. Yeah, like but they are by far the weakest, I think. Yeah, eh, maybe not by far. Way of the Phoenix is kind of weak, but you can build around it. Yeah. Um, Way of the Lion, I think, is one of the better ones. It's like Fear Three to destroy a follower. Yep. With discipline too. I mean, it, it's usable in lion, or it's really good in lion. It's usable in like unicorn, or dragon, or phoenix, or crane. Even like, yeah. I guess crane wouldn't need to run it just because you have better options. But like, if you're crane dueling, like fear four is yeah is pretty darn good. Yeah. <clears throat> but way of the lion is definitely one of the better ones. Yeah. Just, like reusable fear three that can kill stuff. <laughs> Way of the Mantis is maybe the best one. <laughs> it, it has I mean, it's just, it's just straightened. <laughs> yeah, like even if you don't target somebody with a range attack, it's just straightened. Straightened. <laughs> By the way, I paid three gold later on in the game. I have a random extra straighten in my discard pile because I play Mantis. Yeah. Hello. Did I mention that Mantis has been using the Ogre Bushi dueling variant, so focusing this away is not a big deal at all? No kidding. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, worst case scenario, it's straight in Discipline 3. Yeah. Yeah. Best case scenario, it's like, shoot a guy, straight and shoot a guy, do it again <laughs> next turn. Like, I, yeah. I mean, if you straighten somebody with a range attack, awesome. That's gravy. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. It's just double straightened. <laughs> Best random application, straighten Saruchi after you burned a turtle shell against him. So he ranged zero the first time. I got that shot back. Yeah. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Yeah. Also goes high on my list for best flavor text of the set. Oh, absolutely. Uh, But yeah, I mean... If I were a swarm deck that was not running attachments, I would be very afraid of seeing a mantis deck across the table shoot, wanting to shoot people. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, he, just get out the howitzer, let's just get this over with. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, yeah, this this card is clear. Like, I think it's pretty clearly the best one. Yeah. I, I am inclined to agree. <clears throat> but. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, Wave the Phoenix will have a lot of application later on. Uh, right now, there's a reasonable amount of application now. There's like that's quite true. a few spells that have like good actions that you bow for. Like you have the uh, what is it? Uh, Servers of Stone, Sutengu's Embrace, Kyoshi's Wrath, mm-hmm. Fire Spell from this set, Blistering Rain. And Searing something. Siege? No, Searing Siege doesn't bow. Hmm. Oh, and it's right. Yeah, yeah. The Dragon's yeah, yeah. Talon. 
Yeah, we were talking nice. about that one earlier. The the range equal to chi. That one's very really good too. Yeah. The that, the best part about Way of the fireworks. Phoenix is all you have to really do is straighten your spell, but you can take any action on the board. It doesn't say take an additional action from the spell. Yeah. Not that you wouldn't do that. It's just one of those things where this is an interesting application. The other thing too is it's not you may use his abilities a second time. It's, it's an, addition. an additional time. So you yeah. you could if you have all three Way of the Phoenixes, it's like each way of the phoenix in your hand is uh, any spell effect on your board. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much play this will see, just because I don't think phoenix is very good. And, like, spells are kind of mediocre, but, like, this card has, like, a lot of potential power to it. Yeah. Like, it's one part tutor and one part battle action. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Way of the Scorpion, oh my lord. Okay. Um, easily the second best. Use the first fine. Yeah. <laughs> e easily the second best. Uh, just based on the set overall. Uh, this was tuned for uh, a lot of interesting applications. More Mostly to, you know, hey look, that's eight honor loss on a single card. Potentially. Usually Potentially. it's like six. Yeah. And then but, I yeah, get I get to know what a couple of cards in your hand or a couple of cards in your provinces, which you know, a couple of cards in hand. Oh look, I I get to name something I know is in your hand with your with my stronghold. Does yeah. does the discipline cost add on or is it? Uh, I believe it does add on. So you're paying three. Okay, so you're paying the action one has one. Three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it adds on. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. But yeah, this this card is insane. Like one way of the scorpion is six honor in one phase, or one, like, turn cycle. Yeah. Like, high honor clans are just... This is just going to be so hard. Like, even Yasuki Dishonor will probably run it. Yep. Yeah, I've already seen some Yasuki Dishonor builds running. Running, It's that, it was that good. Yeah. Yeah, with Yasuki, it's pay one, opponent loses three. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's already really good. And 90% of the time, you're not even looking at provinces, because who actually looks at provinces? I <laughs> mean... I, mean, I haven't. What's in oh, I hand? guess. The, yeah, I'm just like, hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, very clearly the second best one. Best one for control decks, obviously. Yeah. But I, I can't go, get over how many applications the Mantis one has. <laughs> yeah, well, the Mantis one is the most flexible. Like, yeah. It's yeah. just a straighten twice with upside. Mm hmm. Like, it's yeah. not the mo the best one because it's most powerful, it's the best one because it's the most flexible. Yeah. Uh, spider. Yeah. I, actually I turned like my box spot. into a follower killer. Yeah. Yeah. I turned my box into a follower killer. If I have two of them, then... This is actually pretty funny. If you have two way of the spiders, you can yeah. fear four, destroy a follower, and you can pay six gold to do it again because you use the opposite actions on each one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. this, this one is I think the reason is discipline costs is three instead of two is because you can use both effects in the same turn. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one is like a little bit better than people give it credit for. Um I think it's very similar to Unholy Strike. Yeah. But not quite as good. Yeah. Or in the case of Spider, better. Yeah. Uh, a lot of debate about Way of the Unicorn among Unicorn players. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's move in or move out. Yeah. If you are if you move in, you have to be cavalry. Like, Unicorn already has enough move in for cavalry stuff, specifically. Mm -hmm. It didn't need another one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just pretty like. Much. Move him, move him home, or move him to the battlefield. If his unit is cavalry, and yeah. he would be opposed, like, like if it move him to the battlefield, if he would be opposed, and if he's cavalry, straighten the personality or something. Yeah, that might actually be playable. But this year, if you're running like one at most, and that's just as like a subtract target. Yeah. Uh, this this card is, I think, not very good. Yeah, it's probably the worst <laughs> one. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. there. 
Um, anything else we want to talk about for the set? Uh, just overall impressions. Um, welcome to the to the to the Dishonor set. Yeah, there's a lot of four focus value actions that are like really good. All the waves are four focus. Yeah, mm-hmm. inspired leadership is four focus. Like discovering the seeds of the void is four focus. Deny the false form is like there's just a lot of really good high focus value cards. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of disturbing to think about. Like, you can duel really easily now. Yeah. And like, the, I guess the flip side of that is like, dueling is a lot more dangerous now because there's so many fours. Yeah. Like, there's just way, way too many fours that are playable. Yeah. Um, it, the interesting part about this set for me uh, when I was testing it was it essentially gave rise to uh, new deck types as a whole. Like, prior to this set, Yasuki Dishonor was not available. The Thought of Spider Honor wasn't even available. Um, Fortification decks weren't even thought of unless you were playing Crane. Like, it, it gives way to a lot of creative deck building, but um, very clearly... The winners for this set were Scorpion and Crab. That's my opinion. If you want to go winners and losers. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Dishonor gets a huge boost with this set. Yeah. Like, I think there's a little bit more to it than that, but there are so many, like, good Dishonor cards in this set. Like, so many more than there have been recently. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say that those two factions didn't come out uh, the most ahead. Yeah. I think the the only other thing I'd add is um, I think uh, Unicorn um, is the other one that that got at least from the Dynasty side uh, got better. They were fairly they have been very strong since the uh, Crane Rose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing with Unicorn, uh, Unicorn is half a byproduct of of all the Dishonor boosting yeah, because sure. Cavalry in itself is an advantage against a lot of control decks. Yeah. Uh, and the other part of it is their their economy got really stabilized with that 5 for 5. Yep. And that me- makes such a huge difference to what it used to be. The other thing I would say is, like, Spider, in many forms, got a huge boost. Yeah. Like, Takuan and Taro are both, like, some of the best personalities in the set. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I don't know, Spider probably needed it, um, like they they are also it's weird by being less honorable they're more immune to dishonor which is how I think it always should have been kind of right <laughs> but it's really interesting like spider is almost immune to dishonor not immune but like very much less vulnerable to dishonor than previously yeah. and that was on top of already being less vulnerable to dishonor the way it is now yeah, and like I don't know I, th- I think there's like a couple of new decks that are going to pop up I think Aranai Sensei is going to change things up a lot uh, well we'll see yes yeah. well I'd like to thank uh, uh, both uh, Case Kiyonaga and Anthony Go for joining us uh, on this set review I hope you guys got a lot of good information and good luck at the uh, rest of the coming, uh, the what few coming storm um, legal uh, co ties we have, as well as Gen Con. I'll be seeing you guys there. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. Right. No Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. All right.